Ladies and gentlemen, in the house. It's a portal. We, ha we have the legend. The a recording? Yeah, we're recording. <laughs> oh no, we're not recording on video though. Yeah, jeez. Oh, whatever. That's what we did last time too. Whatever. We got the legend in the studio. I've been here. Yeah, he's a lot no, of no, times. Hasn't legend, he like co-hosted every not episode? Not the myth. Okay, I know. No, not. not that guy. Mr. Ryan Loco. Yeah, nice professional with your phone. I know you're not talking, buddy. My phone's not you on. You are texting all the time. Cheers, Oh, man, gentlemen. you know what? People love when they hear, like, cans opening on you're right? and people oh, drinking. I know. They love I, it. I tried doing that one time. What, what's it called? The sensory. Where are you talking Oh, to? the ASM. The yeah. ASM stuff. ASMR. I'm good. I'd rather I've got a good voice for it. Not really. I bet you I can get you off. All right. Well, I got awkward really quick. Huh? <laughs> okay, well, this was fun, guys. <laughs> yeah. <Thanks for> <laughs> me. Way to make the guests, like, uh, fucking creep out. What kind 30 of minutes. podcast is this? Uh, so, to introduce everyone to Ryan, because I talked about you a bunch of times anyway and pointed that out. So, Ryan is a professional picture taker of the stars. Uh, how I would mean, you? How would you, like... Qualify yourself. I haven't had to get a real job yet, so so far so good. So pretty good. I mean, it pays yeah. the bills. Pays Go the bills. So you've worked with pretty much everyone we're talking about under the sun as far as MMA and wrestling. Mm, yeah, I worked out. I mean, a lot of people in MMA, a lot of people in pro wrestling, jujitsu. I mean, like I've pretty been very much lucky. Very lucky. Everyone, like I said, everyone worth under the sun. You have the the legendary photo of Vitor, the mugshot of Vitor that went on the shirt. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, Shot that, uh, did that, and it turned into a shirt for Ruka, which is really cool. Ah, so have you ever yeah, seen yeah, that, yeah. that shirt, Ruka, the side view of Vitor Belfort? That was Ryan. So I always trip out because, like, growing up, I was really poor, like, really poor, and uh, could never afford Ruka clothing. Like, you'd go into the skate shop, and, like, Ruka was, like, the next level. Like, mm. it was, like, They were soft. rare, though. Like, you could, like they weren't, like, a, there wasn't a big Ruka selection. No, so it was, like, uh, it was, they were always super soft and super quality, and they just looked cool, and the logo was cool. So it would be, like, man, one day I want to be able to afford, it was, like, a $30 shirt. And, like, when you're, like, 19, 20 with nothing, yeah, like, like, oh, my God, I can't, I can get yeah. two generic, like, DVS shirts for, for 30 bucks opposed to one Ruka. I hit up that Marshalls. I come out with like four or five shirts. Yeah. So now I like to have like, they Your did like shit. two shirts actually. Yeah. So it was like really cool. So what about, you did stuff for Roots of Fight too, right? Uh, no, never did anything for Roots of Fight. Oh, you did like they stuff They just for, luckily like, send me stuff. So. <laughs> they I get just send me like dope ass gear. I get lucky. I'm just that's, like, that's I, a, you know, I, I had the one shirt with the uh which is still my one of my favorite the one with the uh with the with gracie on it mm -hmm. and it's like the um can't remember what like like uh it was like a fight the gracie kimura fight poster yes, one? The, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the neck on it was so big though <laughs> like I, I felt like i was wearing like you know the all over the off the shoulder Sometimes i was like i love I this shirt yeah. but i can't wear it you right. probably definitely got the 80s women's shirt that was supposed to be over the shoulder oh shit i see that might explain your fan base that you got there in wrestling, too. So you do a lot of stuff with wrestling, too. Now I do even more stuff with wrestling. I so, But that was that like your first thing was really like wrestling, or were you more into MMA first? Uh, well, no. Growing up, I was a pro wrestling dork. Like, yeah. That's all. Like I, was, I tell this story now because so like growing up, I wanted to be a pro wrestler. That was it. I was going to be a pro wrestler. And as I got older, I realized, man, I'm not tall enough. Because when you're a little kid, like you're seeing Hogan and all, you know they're yeah. six four, six five, right? You know? yeah. Build at six eight, though. Yeah, of yeah. course they always lie. Um, so I'm like, man, I what am I gonna do? Right. At this height, like I'd have to be a, like a high flying luchador, and that's not <laughs> happening, right? <laughs> but now I'm at all these shows, and I'm like, you're everyone's big, smaller than me. Yeah, you're yeah. bigger like, than everybody now. You could have. I could have done it. Like no one told I me. Could have been could. somebody. You still can. I mean, I mean I'm old. I'm really? old. You everything just hurts. Work your way I would up. be a manager right now if in a heartbeat. I would love you to could, just talk and then if like, you could talk manage smack, but... any wrestler, who would it be? Oh man, if I could manage any wrestler, I think I'd want to manage Brock. So that way, I would have to just be on the same private jet just for, appear right. for appearances and stuff. Yeah, but you only get a private jet once every month. It's better than no yeah. It's better than none if you're lucky. <laughs> if you're lucky, would you sit there and just talk in his ear like take the fight, just take the fight with the seat? No, we, like let's do this appearance. 
Come on. Let's do this no, in Paris. Like, yeah. We should be doing this one together. You really should be flying to you, Paris you right really, now. You really, you realize Brock does nothing but hang out in Canada on his compound. Is he in Canada? Yeah, or, yeah. He's a, actually a Canadian citizen now. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Wasn't he like in Milwaukee or something like that? He was in Minnesota. Minnesota. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. But he he bought this like spread up in like Manitoba or something yeah, like well, that. Yeah, when you get paid like that and you don't want to be around civilization no, anyway. He hates people. It's just hot. I don't blame him. I don't blame him. I would I would do the same thing, just not in Canada. It'd be like Montana. So at least it's a little bit warm. Yeah, but I think, like, I'd rather, if I could change, I would, like, if they were, like, if I had enough money where I could be like, yo, I just want to be a Canadian citizen, and they were like, cool, I would do it in a heartbeat. Healthcare? What about Australia? You wouldn't do Australia? No, because, uh, so, my wife is uh, from Sydney, and so, like, the traffic in Sydney is so awful, and I hate traffic more than anything on this planet. Is like, it worse than L.A.? Uh, it's pretty bad. Really? Yeah. yeah. Cause not. like you, you have, it's think of like Miami, like Sydney was not made for a lot of people. Miami's not made for a lot of people. And right. so like, they're all trying to get in there to work and it's just like, it's not for me. So like, I will like do anything to not be in traffic. Anything. Like I, I love the bright line train. I like the tri-rail. Yeah. Anything to not sit in traffic because traffic to me is just mind and like mind. It's a waste of a huge waste of life. It's awful. You end up realizing like my parents have gone from. Lantana to Fort Lauderdale for the last 18 years, almost every day for work. And that's like, on a regular day, if there's no traffic, that's 45 minutes. But with traffic, hour and a half there, hour and a half back. Nope. If nope. you're not caught in traffic. So. If I have to go south of Boca, I get angry. Yeah. I get angry. I'm like, oh. like if I hear the word Pompano or anything under Sunrise, Deerfield. anything under Deerfield, I'm yeah. like, you got to be kidding me! I don't want to. I don't want to go there. As soon as you get to that that curve, right after, um, right before, I guess uh, we should probably not talk about this because right. it's local. But right when you get by Hillsboro, yeah, that's it. It's like so that's Deerfield. Yeah, after yeah. Hillsboro, pfft, yeah, there's about it. there's that Deerfield traffic. Once you hit that, it's just a shit show. You might get lucky, and there's a break between Deerfield and Hollywood, or not Hollywood. Um, damn. Yeah, I guess it's just Fort Lauderdale, like Oakland Park, where like the the gym is. Like there, you might get lucky, but if not, you're you're fucked. You're stuck there. This is a Deerfield podcast. This is yeah. yeah right. Well, our our buddy moved, our buddy moved to uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. North North Carolina, and rush hour there is like four cars. Six a.m. here. <laughs> it's like it's or four a.m. It's ridiculous. It's like, oh my god, there's like ten cars in front of you, and you can count them, and it's, it's like. Oh. What I wouldn't give to have that here. No, I remember, like I told you, the first time I ever experienced L.A. traffic, scared the shit out of me. Because it was just, there was a car that was on fire, but everything came to a dead stop. And then I realized, this happened like in the fucking movies. It's exactly like they show you in the movies. People are just running out of their car, taking off. Everybody's fucked. There's no zombie apocalypse mode or nothing. No, everybody's dying. I just figured it'd be like that scene from Clueless when they got on the freeway. I never watched Clueless. It's a classic movie. Yeah, of course. You never I've seen never Clueless? You don't remember? Never, they, they, got, they, got, they, they got lost and they got on the highway and they were You're talking to me like out. I watched I've never watched Clueless. <laughs> How could you never seen Clueless? I've never seen Clueless. Rolling with the homies. I've Rolling with the homies. You are on your own. Wow. I've never <laughs> seen it. Out, I'm good. I was watching. I'm like, not on my own. Obviously, you're well, on your yeah, own. Yeah, I mean, let's say you guys are on your own. I'm no, good. You're on your own. I'm all good. So, you were the... What's the word I'm looking for? Official? You're an exclusive official photographer for the Black Zillions. Yeah, way back in the day. How'd you get that one? Uh, so I was working for a company called Jocko, and uh, we had just sponsored Rashad Evans. And so Rashad's manager, mm. uh, Glenn Robinson, was like, oh, you know, you, do you guys happen to have anyone that does video? And they're like, yeah, we got Ryan. So I was like, oh, cool. So they f- brought me out to Florida. And I can't. Uh, this was in, I was in San Diego at the time, so they brought me out to Florida, and I was doing doing uh, uh, video work for Rashad, like just to show him, like in the clothes and like training, you know, just to have a bunch of footage or whatever. And uh, so then it, they're like, uh, oh, you know, we we do stuff with like Kenny Florian too. Do you happen to, you know, do you want to go up there? So like they sent me up to Boston to to shoot stuff with Kenny. And so uh, eventually, uh, Glenn decided I, you know, I like this clothing line. It's already established, so they bought it. Right. So then it was like I was going to Florida all the time. They would fly me back and like I would stay here and I'd stay at like 
maybe their hotel or I'd stay at Glenn's house and like I would just, you know, be at the gym pretty much all day just filming content nonstop. Yeah. And so uh, eventually I got uh, evicted, not my fault, but I got evicted. <laughs> not my fault. Evicted from the, uh, the apartment we were staying at. And so I was like, I got nothing holding me back. I didn't have a car at the time because it exploded. And luckily the office was like eight minutes from my house. So they right. just picked me up on the way there. Um, so I didn't have a car. had nothing holding me back. All my possessions were in a box. So a was, box? Like, yeah. I, I moved here with a box. Yeah. God, I'm, I envy that. All right. I just don't like I, having stuff. I, I just had it. to empty out my house. Yeah. So at one point, didn't Flex buy you a couch? No. So... <laughs> So eventually I moved to Florida in a box because I was like, yo, I got nothing. Can I work for Jocko in Florida? Like, yes. So they flew me out here and then I found an apartment, lived mm. with like my box of stuff. Literally, I have pictures of like a futon that I bought at Ikea for like 130 bucks, uh, a, a bed I bought from Ikea for like 150 bucks. And that was it. Right. And like a box. Did you tape the six hours it took you to put them together? I was. I'm actually really, really good at putting stuff together from IKEA. Yeah, and like I am not a like a manly man in the sense of like Sean's putting stuff. Absolute garbage in yeah. any of that stuff. No, if it's wood, if it's just wood, I'm awesome. <laughs> but like the the IKEA the bed that I got and like with little, the screws yeah. and like it had it had cable across it and all this stuff. I'm like, yeah, it's rough. And they don't come with any instructions. Well, or they do, but they're they in do. Swedish. They but they're in drawings. Swedish. Yeah, it's like, but that was before like. YouTube was. Yeah. They have I, pictures though. Yeah. Still, still, I get it. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. So, um, so I, I went from that apartment. I moved to another apartment. I probably moved to that apartment with even less stuff than what yeah. I came to Florida with. And so, like, people would come over and be like, "Where's your like?" My living room was a a table with a television on top of it, like a TV stand. And people were like, "Where's your couch?" I'm like, no. What do I need one for? Sit on the cares? floor. You're right there. Yeah, I, I didn't care. Oh, you were traveling a lot too. Yeah, I traveled a lot, and like I'd be at the gym all day, and I'm like, I just like I don't like stuff. I yeah. hate stuff. I don't like it. So eventually, uh, Flex Lewis was like, "You don't have a couch." I don't know. <laughs> I don't have a couch. What do I need a couch for? And he's like, "Well, I bought a new couch. I'm getting rid of my old couch." I'm like, "Great." He's like, "I'm giving you my couch." I'm like, "I don't want it. I don't need a couch. I'm good." Then one day he calls. He's like, "Are you home?" I said, "Yes." He's like, "All right, cool." Shows up in my apartment with a couch. <laughs> so, like, so now sure. I had a, I have a couch. Or at the time I had a couch. Did That's you ever right. sit on it? Very like it, like. There's a photo of Flex on the couch. Yeah. And I'm assuming that was the day. That he was came the in. day he He's moved like, in. The only person that like <laughs> sat on the couch. It's like, <laughs> I just like I don't like having stuff. And then like, eventually I moved from Florida to Europe, and I just had a box again. It was awesome. What was that? That was. Uh, like, 2015. Yeah. See, I didn't was know that, you like moved. Like he just bolted. He's like, I'm saving up. I'm going to Europe. I'm like, all right, yeah. cool. And he just like disappeared. Bounced. I was like, if I don't do it now, I'm never gonna do it. Yeah. So I'm Where out. in Europe did you move? I moved to Berlin. Ah. Yeah, it was amazing. It's it's a bit, Deutsch. Ah, no. no. But uh, <laughs> that's everybody why, there does speak English. That's so why I picked crazy. Berlin because I was like, if I'm gonna have a home base, I wanted to be in a place that like a lot of English is being spoken. Um, I learned how to say kind of Zwieben, which means no onions. So when I would order my donor kebab, <laughs> everyone eats donor kebab there. So when I would eat my donor kebab, I would say kind of Zwieben, no onion. They knew. They'd put my garlic sauce on top, and we were good to go. But, yeah, I didn't. I, I learned. I forgot it all, but I learned enough German to, like, get around or, or say, hey, I don't speak German. Can you help me? Um, but everything else, like, like, either they had the Google thing on your phone, so, like, it yeah. would translate words to English. Or, like, it's a very, like, friendly country. Like, yeah. very open and yeah, very I mean, helpful. Yeah, people don't realize that. Like, uh, well, I guess Austria, Austria is obviously a different country, but, like, that, they do speak German, and they're very German culture-esque. Right. So it's, like, going to the, like, everybody was super helpful. It's, like, like Germans have this this national image of, like, cold and, like, yeah, because yeah. the language is so harsh. Hoitsch and Brooks, you know, like, it's, like, really good. The biggest thing is that, like, people always make the joke that they have no sense of humor. That's, like, always been kind of, like, the gag. But they're super nice people. But it was, like, it's anywhere in Europe. If you go and you play, like, the stereotypical, like, American tourist, like, yeah, the people are going to be fucking rude to you. But if you come in with an open mind and, like, you're trying to, like, get by and stuff like that, people are super nice. You could get, oh, like, get by for the longest time. Well, like, pretty much every country I went to, I learned how to say, sorry, I don't speak. Right. I, can you help me? I speak English. I'm, but, like... So I, everyone told me, like, yo, you're going to go to Paris, and they're all going to be jerks. And, like, nope. 
they were the nicest people ever. Like, yeah. <laughs> everyone warned me about Paris. And I went there and I was like telling, hey, sorry, like walk, because I think a lot of people walk into a store or to a shop thinking like, what, you don't speak English? Yeah. But my first thing was always like, uh, je ne parle yeah. français, you know, however it is. Like, je ne sais pas français. And everyone was cool. Like I have, I have n every country I went to, I have no problems whatsoever. Like everyone was cool. Every country was cool. China was a little rough, but everything else was cool. China was rough. China was rough. Where did you go? When did you? Go? Oh, because when I went, to, I've won. Uh, I've gone twice now yeah. to China, and both times I was there for like two, two and a half, three weeks. It's like one was with Rashad. No, who'd you go with? No, oh, first time I went with. Oh man. I went with Anthony Johnson. That's what it was. Yeah. And uh, we went to uh, Chengdu. We went to Beijing and then uh, Taipei. Yeah. Taiwan. And then the next time I went with uh, Kamaru Usman, Tiago Silva, Pulga, and Michael Johnson. And we went back to, we went to Chengdu again. Yeah. And like Chengdu, the food is incredible, but it's a very like not a cool city. <laughs> or like, at least no i don't mean to say like that sounds really awful like i don't mean that but it just it's like not yeah you do. it's not like it's shanghai not you do. come it's on not, it's, it's, it's not it's, it's not it's, it's not it's, yeah. it's just not as modern as i would like it's more you know traditional I mean? you like down yeah. to earth like you gotta poop school. in a hole yeah oh yeah. 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 yeah oh yeah when we went to the gyms there they they all just had holes in the ground and like you know my thing is like i don't get upset because all the country i've been to i never get weirded out because i mean that's your home i yeah. who am i to like go into your home and be like this is wrong yeah like, that's it's like where's the denny's guys yeah like yeah. i've been with people where they're like oh yeah. like how do you eat this like yo you're in someone else this is yeah, not this your is, home this, you yeah. can't you know so shit doesn't work but most people don't know that people think that the u.s is like this everywhere and they travel the world and they're like oh i want to see the pyramids but that's why you have the pyramids next to taco bell because they still want to have their taco bell and the pizza it's like no like you're going into a culture you need to understand like especially you see it the culture shock that people have when you go into another country like if you get someone who's super just been here in the united states and all of a sudden you throw them in brazil and you start walking through like a favela like they just their minds are blown like this is how people you live every day you can't just walk through favela. I, I mean i did like obviously uh, i went in there with like the the right people and stuff but oh yeah oh yeah yeah, <laughs> I, yeah you left that part out but no, but like you walk in that, like if you go to Jamaica, like obviously most people go to like Ocho Rios, which is super just touristy. But if you go down to Kingston, you go down to like Trenchtown and stuff, yeah, you better go with the right people. But you start seeing people living in shacks. That's the way people live. Like, who are you? It's like, it's not easy all around the world. That going, traveling is what showed me like people that, like, this is going to sound terrible, but people that say, oh, I'm poor and live in America. Yeah really don't have any mm -hmm. clue what poor is like i mean there's some people that are that are poor here in the united states that are poor poor like right you would see in other parts of the world for sure but i don't think as poor as they would be in they know, have more of a of a opportunity for an out right here but, than but other yeah places. i've never seen people in the modern times sweeping dirt out of their dirt floor hut oh, here um, in america well i mean you got to look at like the the people that still live in like the sewers and stuff like that there's tons of well them. there's there's homeless people and stuff like that but i'm talking about uh, ho homeless is a different animal i'm talking about people that have destitute a place to live yeah. that's just again four walls a tin roof if they're lucky and the walls whatever the walls are made out of normally maybe tin maybe cardboard yeah it's like that's not prevalent here in America. Like you hear a lot of people say, "Oh, you know, the poor here in America," but the, the poor, you know, have the poor here water, in America have, are still like better off than the poor in other countries. Right? Like yeah. they have running water. They have they can sneak into a McDonald's and take right, like a shower right, in the like, sink, you know, or whatever. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like I was like I was that was what like when I went to Brazil. That's that was what surprised me was like because I've never I've only been to America and Europe, which is very modern. Yeah, but when you go to like Brazil and then you go out into the backwoods of Brazil, and you see these people living in, and I don't mean indigenous people, I mean like a baby playing in dirt wearing a diaper. It was like you got to be kidding me! And like yeah. these kids come up to you, like I gave them, I had like, I I think I had changed like a hundred bucks, yeah. and I gave them everything I had just because like. They come up to you and they're so like, 
They, they weren't asking for money. Because they saw that 100 bucks you changed. And you got no, 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 no. They didn't ask for money, but like. No, you feel it like, yeah. You feel, like, they didn't, they were just, they were just, they were, they loved seeing an American and they were like, they were like, like all up in, like, oh, you know, and then like, and Manny was doing all the translating yeah. and, and like saying how, you know, how different I looked and how, and whatever. And I'm just like, I'm just giving these kids money. There's like four kids. You look I like, just kept giving them money because it's just like, dude, like they were shoeless and like, like by. oh, it was like, I felt so terrible. And like, I never felt like le- leaving Brazil is when I was like, man, we don't realize how good oh, for sure. we have it, mm-hmm. and especially, you know, in America or Western civilization. It's crazy. Yeah, no, it's definitely super different here. Like so these you, shoes, like. See that? Did you see that? Wow. That's like, that was, that shoe's signed by Henry Host over there, and he just chucked it like a piece of wow. shit. You see this guy? I don't like shoes on my, um, it's, it's not shoe. your fucking desk, first of all. It's, it's not mine. your desk. It's definitely my fucking desk. That's not your desk. This is, this is Lee's, a worn Lee's desk. Shoe? Huh? No. Oh. And then there's a shoe. You hear this fucking guy? Can you get my fucking No, I'm you not wear, getting your Do you shoes. wear shoes in the house? What? Do you wear shoes in the house? No. Okay, good. You don't wear shoes in the house. Yeah, I wear shoes. No, no, I like take shoes off at the door. Oh, okay, okay, that's what I mean. Yeah, like, I'm no, always it's in shock my... when people are like wearing shoes around. Like, a lot of people do that. I don't. I don't get it. It's like, well, I keep my fucking floors clean, so I don't really have to worry about it. It's just like all the stuff you trudge in. Like, yeah, man, I'm good. I don't yeah. like. I don't like because I've been in bathrooms. Yeah, you you're, you go in public bathrooms yeah. and you bring that and walk through your house. It's like. Ugh. So you went to to China a couple of times. I did, and then came back, and then you ended up in Vegas, the place you said you'd never fucking go and live in. Yeah, I hated Vegas. No, I don't. I don't drink and I don't party. So yeah. like, man, Vegas is like my anti city. But um, I met my now wife and she lived in vegas and so i was like i'm moving to europe and then i'll just move to vegas yeah and we'll figure it out so i went from there came back moved to vegas and then now uh you got a bunch of stuff don't you <laughs> yeah I uh, stuff. we do have i mean probably more than i would like uh but i as long as she's happy i don't care like i i survive i which one is is she ocd or you ocd uh well no she's very clean like she right. likes to have so everything have neat i mean she's an interior designer so she likes to have everything in yeah. order and she has a place for everything so and like i am like mr i don't care and like when i say i don't care i really don't care like i have a friend of buddy of mine walked in last week and was like wow you have a lot of pink in your living room you don't care and I'm like, no, no she no. makes her happy i, I got a like question her. though here's a here's a question she's an interior designer she is how many pillows does your bed have uh the bed has Seven. Oh. Seven pillows. And the couch has probably seven or eight. Do you have probably like, would have more. No. Nice. Do you have the couch that no one sits on that no one's allowed to sit on? So no, like so she bought a very nice couch. Right. Like she wanted a really nice couch and I'm like, it's cool, whatever you want. Is it oh, Scandinavian okay. by any chance? It's not it's not IKEA, but it's not IKEA, do. definitely not IKEA. And so then we, we got our dog. Yeah. And she was like, the dog is not allowed on the couch. No. And I was like, okay, whatever. She's like, no, this is too nice of a couch. Dog's not allowed on the couch. Dog's not allowed in the bed. I'm like, done. Whatever. Like, again, I don't, you're, yeah. you, I fully admit, you are the boss. Yeah. I'm fine with it. Does not bother me. And about two days later, the dog now completely owns the couch. The dog goes in the bed. Our dog can do whatever she wants. Like, literally, like, there was a section of the couch that was going to be mine. It's like this longer section. Yeah. So I could lay there and, like, put sports on. No. That's now like covered in blankets. The dog sits there, unless the dog wants to sit on the other side. So if Noodle wants to sit on that side, Noodle sits there. Noodles runs the show now. Two women, two girls in my life, and they completely That's funny. run the whole thing. And I'm again, fine with it. I have like yeah, but I mean it's obvious. Like I mean, I remember like when you introduced me to her like the first time. I was like, man, this is the happiest I like I've seen you yeah, yeah, like yeah. ever. So I'm it's super pretty funny. It's like I never want to move to to Vegas. I never. It's like move to Vegas, and then it's like, Vegas is awesome. Vegas is such a cool no, town when you live there. I, I I I was there two years in a row for the for the worlds. Yeah, and I felt trapped because I don't drink, I don't party. Mm-hmm. I felt trapped. I was like, "What am I supposed to?" I mean, it's not the strip though. That's the thing. Like, you got to like venture out. When well, you venture I did out of venture strip, out. Yeah, dude, I went out to the I went to the Hoover Dam. I went. I you know I so went like to Henderson. I was like, I need I I. But I felt and like the day we were flying out. We weren't flying out till like ten o'clock, and it was checkout like, time. And I'm like, 
I want to go. What am I going to do for eight hours? What am I going to do for eight hours? So we like we went to a couple casinos and looked around. I was like, let's just go to the airport. And we went to the airport, put on Netflix, and watched Netflix for six At the hours. Airport? Oh. Yes. No, like so, like when you live there, like you don't ever go to the strip unless yeah. a friends in town and they want to go. And so you find other things to do. Like we have the best best food in Vegas. Like yeah. they have the best food, like everywhere. And I'm not talking about on the strip. I'm talking about on the strip. You got Chinatown. You. I got, a, I got a restaurant there that I love. Lotus as I am. No. Oh. It's a breakfast place. Oh, you go to what do you see? Let's. Uh, you go to. It's not on the strip. No, no. So you either go to Hash House to Go Go. Nope. Or you go to uh, Egg and I. Nope. I think I went to Egg and I. Uh, what's the other one? There's one more. Uh, Broken Yolk? Nope. Oh, what is it? It's called Stacks and Yolks. Oh, Stacks and Yolks. Maybe that's what I was fucking up. But yeah, yeah. Stacks, Stacks and Yolks, and yolks was the shit. They also just got a Metro Diner out there. Metro Diner's bomb. They have them Never here. Never heard of that. Well, Metro Diner's amazing. Did you ever like go anytime they had uh, like the new chefs or whatever in the casinos? Did you ever go and test them out? So what we would always do is we'd always go to Giada's. Uh-huh. Giada's uh, restaurant. That was like our restaurant they would go to. Also, the best Italian restaurant there is in the venetian uh trattoria reggiano yeah so it's a small little spot but it's the best italian in town so we'd go there there's a place called noodle man which had like the authentic noodles and i've heard of noodle man, man, for some man noodle man's the bomb and so like when we were in like uh maybe it was taiwan but like we'd go to the noodle houses and they were so good and like and china and chengdu because the Sichuan region like they have like that hot like sauce like the right, hot pot yeah. sauce and everything with the with the uh peppercorns it makes like your face numb yeah oh. yeah it's yeah. amazing so like we'd be sitting there in front of the hot pot and like having the hot sauce and like you're sweating and you can't feel your lips yeah. and you can't feel your tongue and it's so good and so i finally found a place in vegas that had as close to the sauce as i can get i still haven't found the legit sauce yeah. but it was as close as i could get you're definitely gonna, not gonna find that in florida though no, like I, I still can't find the sauce. Like the, yeah. I want the one where like my your face tingles. Yeah. You have to like go over there, snag some, put it in a container and ship it back home. And then you're like you can't drink the water there. Yeah, that's not happening. And so like then you're either stuck like either just like with the, and you know how like this does not help you when yeah. you're, like your mouth is on fire, yeah. but you're just drinking cokes or beers because you know you're not gonna drink. You know, you know what the, the you know what the secret is to everybody like. Oh, it's bread, it's milk to, to get away the sting. But there's one surefire way to get get rid of the sting of the heat. Why? Honey. Oh, yeah, I heard honey, that. Yeah. Honey works like a charm. Yeah, of course. I don't know why. I'm sure, it just, well, coats. It just it coats everything. Like, it just, whatever you have, like, coats. Like, for when I was having, like, stomach issues every day, just like a shot of honey and, like, warm water, that'll heal you up. And especially if you have, like, you get those travel guts. Like, charcoal is one thing, but honey and warm water, you drink a bunch, and it basically just coats everything. So it helps soothe it. That's the way to go, man. Yeah, but going there for, going somewhere for, for three weeks. Of it's four, tough. Well, especially because most, like, I went, when I, when I went to Brazil, I went there for, I was there for 12 days. By day eight, I could not eat anything else besides, like, chicken and salad. Yeah, otherwise because you shoot my, your brains out. Well, no, it wasn't that. It was just my stomach did not feel right eating yeah. the food because my i think my body went through withdrawal mm-hmm. like because there's preservatives in the food here yeah so it's like after eating all this fresh food like my body went nah, this yeah. is it you're not eating anymore like i couldn't eat any more red meat like the thought of it made me yeah so i could just see being in some place for three weeks and and having well, you're like, I mean, you're not used to the bacteria that's in the food. It's coming from a different part of the world altogether. It'll fuck with you no matter where you go. I mean, you know, at all the different places you travel to, and like going to Brazil, I was fine once I got there, but once it came back, you pay for it. Go to Jamaica, as soon as you come back, you pay for it. It's the same thing. It's just a different food. It's different prep, like different ingredients. Your body's not used to that. Mm-hmm. You'll get fucked up quick. So now you left Vegas. You're back here. Did. How did you end up back here? My wife got a killer job in Palm in, in, in West Palm Beach. Just happened to be happened to work out, and she. So I came. I was flying here for a photo shoot, and she was like, "Oh, I got an offer in West Palm. Might take it. Not sure." I'm like, "All right, cool." And then like the day I'm flying, I land, and she's like, "I'm gonna accept the offer. I'm gonna take it." So I'm like, "Oh," she's like, "And we're moving in a month, so we need to, <laughs> so we need to find a place to live." And Is like, she, does she do a lot of work on the island? Uh, no, not really. Like, uh, her job is, uh, 
they get everywhere. Like when she was in Vegas, she was working on jobs in China and like she like oh, okay, it, so it's awesome. like an international yeah, design house. Yeah, yeah, she can do anywhere. So, but she was. I was like, as long as there's an airport, I can work because I'll just travel for work, so no big deal. And there's two within tra- driving yeah, yeah. distance. So I was like, cool. And so I found uh, found us an apartment real quick. Found a good spot. And uh, then we drove across the country and moved here. Did you stop at any of the sites? I uh, stopped in Albuquerque, got some green chili. Stopped in Dallas. Then I uh, made a quick detour to Houston and met the uh, founders of the dog rescue that got us Noodle. Oh, yeah. So that was cool. That's cool. Then stopped in New Orleans. Did that for two days, which was cool. I mean, which is weird when you get in the city, not dirt. I've only been to New Orleans for Mardi Gras, but I hear the city is like nowhere. Like, like you wouldn't. The city is awesome when it's not Mardi Gras. I've never been there, you know, when Otherwise. there wasn't a billion people yeah. Yeah, walking like, the streets. No, it's like me. New Orleans was okay. It wasn't like we went there. And uh, went yeah, there for beignets. a PFL ev- event. Yeah, yeah, definitely go to uh, Cafe Du Monde and have the beignets and the hot chocolate and everything like that. It's it's a cool city. I could see like I think we were just there when it was like super hot and it just wasn't like the best yeah, time for it. Spot, yeah. yeah, oh yeah, definitely humid. And then we went to uh, Saint Augustine or Saint Augustine or whatever Saint here. Augustine, yeah. Saint Augustine, whatever it's called. Saint Augustine. <laughs> that place with the castle. Yeah, with the with the fort, the Spanish fort, and then uh, came here. Did you yeah. do the tour? No, it was just literally found a place to the like biggest eat, go to sleep. The oldest yeah. bar in America is in St. Augustine. Is it really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, you didn't miss anything on that tour. I remember when I took it, it was like, oh, this is cool. And they have like some fake old school like cannonballs there. And then they, they try to make it sound exciting besides like what it really was. Like this is a, like they put you all in this room and they're like, this is the latrine. Like, oh, thanks for bringing this into the fucking toilet, asshole. I really, it's just an empty room. Obviously, you go in there, you take a dump. It's like this, this is in a bucket. No, no, it's not that. They didn't have buckets back then. They had buckets. No, they just had a fucking room where you go and take a dump. No, and like, they had to have like, buckets. Buckets of turd? No, I'm good. You shit in a bucket. Look, man, I didn't get that deep into it. They just put me in a room. It's like this is where people used to shit. I'm like, okay, then why am I here? Like this is really part of this is get a, get a taste of the ambiance. The cat the the fort is actually pretty cool. They have the it's one, one of two forts in North America. Well, there's the, the That's it? Old, We're out of forts? Like as far as walled walled no No, wait, that wait. one that one like the one in St. Augustine was like it's famous because of the design. It's supposed to be where you're open from all sides so they like they could see from all different angles. That was like the whole the design of it. But it's not the the one or two. I know there's a couple more because you have the dry tortugas. That was like an old prison. Yeah, but that's technically not North America. Yeah, it is. No. It's, you're it's thinking in the Caribbean. Of, no, you're thinking that. Like, if you go down to the Keys, right? You go to Key West and Learning you take a lot today. an hour, like a boat, like it's like an hour of boat ride. Uh, but hour boat States. ride off the United the coast of the United States. Oh my gosh, this guy is so fucking dense. Are you going to make me open up Google again? <laughs> I'm telling you, because it's right there. You go from the Keys. You don't need a fucking passport to go in there. But you need a boat. Well, I mean, you, need, you don't you need, need a boat pay, to go to Puerto Rico, right? You, you don't need a passport to go to Puerto Rico. You don't need a passport to go here, but it's the United States. I know, but it doesn't oh, uh, mean... Okay, so you is, is, Puerto Re- is Puerto Rico part of North America? Yeah. No, it's part of the Caribbean. It's, don't, it's, don't, it's, don't Ameri- mind it's don't an American mind territory, don't but mind it's them. not part of North America. Is it be- above or below the equator? I mean, equator? you need a boat to go to Hawaii. Right. You don't need a passport for that. Right, but and that's then, not part of North America. Oh, you mean like the actual continental, the actual North, continental North, America. North America. So, no, America. we just gave him the fucking out because he wasn't even no, thinking about No, that's exactly what I was. I didn't say it was in part of America. Anyway. I kept, I kept saying there's another one North there. America. Don't mind. He, North he, America. When he gets fucking caught in bullshit just, like this, then he this has every to like, nitpick. Yeah, he has to fucking like he has to find his fucking out. When you listen back Look, and you hear me he, say North America and not the United was, States, what was the South thing you, that you, we were talking about? There's one guy that was training like at Temple Martial Arts. Say, yeah, and he's a fucking Southpaw. No, he's not a Southpaw. Oh God. You see what I'm saying? And we had this argument. What is like, this two weeks again? <laughs> oh, that's the portal. <laughs> it, it, it makes a portal. You get the fuck. You know what, Rick and Morty? Oh, you don't watch that much TV. I don't either. watch television, yeah, really. No, this is from Rick and Morty. Nice. I actually might like it. Well, you don't like sci-fi shit, right? I'm, I mean, I'm cool with everything. I just don't watch television. Like, nah. I don't. It's I like, watch, like, documentaries, and that's it. 
Fire Fest. Hot, yeah. Did you go oh, to I heard Fire that Fest? one. So you haven't watched rad. it yet? No. Oh, you got to watch it. It's pretty good. What about the? Have you watched the Michael Jackson no, one? No, I still got to yeah. watch that one. The R. Did Kelly. watch that one and the R. Kelly. What's one. what's your what's your take on it? Oh man, it's so hard to like. I mean, it's just it's a uh, it's a sad situation all around. Like, I mean, it's either a he didn't do it and these people are on a money grab. MJ. Yeah. Well, like when you start hearing all the details of like how he had the doorbell sound like connected to like the hallway. So he could hear if someone was walking up towards his room. Like, that's when it gets, like, kind of creepy. Well, it's like, just, I think that if it if it is true, it's a very sad situation because you realize that there has to be a bunch of people involved, yeah. like security right, and everything. Right, right, and, right. like, for anyone to turn a blind eye if that was actually happening is a horrible thing. And I just, I know that my mom wouldn't let me stay yeah. over at a friend's house, period. So like, alone a grown-ass man. Yeah, for it's just, so it's like, I don't know. But it's, it's weird if you think about it, it's... It's one of those higher echelons of stardom that not that many people achieve. To and you have to be secluded. Like the fact that he like they had to hire people to pretend like when he was grocery shopping so he could feel normal. Did you see that oh, one? No. So like there's if you look at there's photos and stuff because he couldn't go anywhere. So they literally just closed down an entire supermarket and like. They would hire people out, like obviously people that worked for him, and pretend to be regular shoppers, and they would just let him go, and he would pretend to be grocery shopping. And there's photos of it. Huh. It's like so. It's like, imagine if like I pretend I don't know Sean. Like, hey, how's your day going? Okay, great. Like, just what are you getting today? That sounds like, wonderful to pretend that's you don't right. know. Right? You know what I'm saying? Pretend so, you don't know Sean. I mean, I've been around some like weird like higher like celebrities. When you start talking to people like they don't even know like their phone bill, who their phone carrier is, it's like I say I need a phone and someone brings it to me. Like that's when you start reading. Who like, are you hanging out with? I mean, when I was doing all the music industry stuff and I was hanging out with like just, yeah. just drop the names. No, I'm not like you. So we don't have like a fucking book of fucking photographs up here. Well, you that's see, what you I, see, that, I don't see my. Well, that's what I want to. We're talking about Michael Jackson. Who's the most famous person you've done a shoot with? Would like one on one shoot. Um. Hmm. Well, I mean, technically, I guess Mike Tyson. Yeah. I mean, like we were there oh, filming. The Mike flex the tat. Filming. You saw the tat, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I've, I've, no, I've seen. Yeah. So for people that are just listening to the podcast and not watching on YouTube, you had Mike Tyson autograph your arm. Yeah, I got a Mike Tyson punch out tattoo years and years ago. And then he was there in Virginia for a glory kickboxing event. He yeah. was like the special guest host or whatever of the event. And uh, I was like, oh, I, I am not a celebrity guy. I don't care. I don't take selfies with celebrities. Yeah. It's just not my thing. I don't like to take photos of myself, period. Never. But I was like, oh, man, I got this tattoo of him. You know, growing up, I loved Mike Tyson. And I loved the video game. So I was like, hey, you know, it'd be kind of cool. You sign my arm. And he looked at the tattoo and he was just like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> As he's looking at you with a tattoo on his face, yeah, yeah he, the guy with the tattoo on his face looked at me like, "What is wrong with you?" Yeah. I mean, he signed it. Like, yeah. It was cool about it, but it was pretty funny to have like Tyson be well, like, "But Tyson is that." But then you went and you got it tattooed over. Yeah, so this was the day of the event, and then I just took a shower and kept my arm up and like washed everything yeah. except the one section of my arm. Right. And I landed and I drove to a tattoo sh- shop in Fort Lauderdale, uh, real quick. And uh, I was like, hey, man, can you fit me in real quick? I go, it's a super simple tattoo. And he's like, all right, yeah, I got a little time. What do you want? I go, oh, I just need you to trace over this. It's Mike Tyson's autograph. And he's like, what? Yeah. No way. And I was like, yeah, I told him the story. And he was like super cool about it and like did it. Well, that'd be a cool That's thing awesome. to do. Yeah. But t- Tyson is that level. Like there's few people that have been world famous. Well, I think the problem is, too, is like nowadays we have such uh, access with social media and everything like yeah. that. That like the level of celebrity is like we'll, you'll never see like that Michael Jackson celebrity because like there was an an aura to them and like a yeah. mysteriousness right. to them and you didn't get to see them every day, so like you'd see like videos of Michael at a hotel and like thousands I, like why would yeah. anyone bum rush I don't care like how I can't get in that mindset but nowadays like you can find out what they're doing on Instagram you can see what yeah. they're doing on Twitter like they're doing well live the streams. closest you got is like Bieber. Like, Bieber is probably the closest that you had, like, recently where people would go nuts, where people would storm the hotels, try to break in. Yeah. Like, and just go absolutely bonkers where they're, like, fainting at the shows and all sorts of stuff. It's a whole different fucking level, Then there was that, like, South Korean 
boy group that girls were going nuts oh, for. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Like in Korea and different, like, parts, yeah, they fucking go nuts for it. Like, they'll still do that. It's not like that in the U.S., but other parts of the world, for sure. Isn't it weird that Tyson went from feared by most of the... Everyone. Everyone, and now he's almost, like, beloved. Like, he's 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 cha- morphed his his person like you see Mike Tyson now you hear Mike Tyson now you don't you're not afraid of Mike Tyson you're just like no I want to I want to see that video that came I out wanna, the other day oh, the, what, what, of then, him shadow boxing <laughs> in the bar well, still yeah. fucking afraid of the guy no no but I'm saying like he's not the kind of like before like when he's saying I'm gonna eat your children mm-hmm. and all this stuff it's like I don't ever want to meet that dude now I like I'm at that point where I'm like man if I ever met Tyson I want to give him a hug because he seems like the kind of dude <laughs> yeah. that you just want to give him a hug and say dude it's all right I just remember we were in Vegas my mom was in town and we were walking through the Venetian and Tyson was coming by and uh, my mom was like you took photos of him right I go yeah she goes Let's go up to him and say hi. And I was like, no. <laughs> Let's I go, one, he's not going to remember me. And two, like, just leave the dude alone. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I never understood. I know my mom was excited. Yeah, my yeah. mom doesn't get to, like, hang out with celebrities or anything like that. Or, you know, she just works. And I'd, without her, I'd, I'd be nothing. But it was just like, she was all like, you guys know each other? You guys can just go say hi. And I was like, it doesn't you work that way. You guys are pen pals? Oh, go ahead. R- Rogan was talking about that like, the other day. What? Is it like, he was t- one day he was talking with, like, The Rock. And this dude just like slipped right oh, between yeah. them and wanted to take a selfie with the rock. It's like it's the the selfie has become the new autograph. Yeah. Like, like well, they, they, everyone just, just wants to like validate or show that they were there. Yeah. Or, or they just they're looking for those likes, man. On, yeah. On Insta- yeah. On Instagram. Well, it's like look or, at how cool I am. I get to sit there and like talk to this guy, but it's you're not getting it out of it. You do you really care about meeting that person? Like, do you really care about who they are as an individual or their artwork? No, you just want to say, I met a famous person. Yeah, like, who cares? Yeah. I just, I like, I like to have a connection with people I photograph and, like, I talk with them. And, like, that's why, like, when I photograph you, like, I support you then. Like, we shared yeah. a moment. And, like, then no matter what it is you do, I'm down for it. And that's why, like, shot a couple pro wrestlers and now I'm like that's it whatever you guys are doing I'm supporting it I'll tweet about it I'm Instagramming about it people will be like yo you're a grown ass man watching pro wrestling I go yeah those are my homies on there yeah. like, I want to see them do well what if you, you said you're working a lot with the with wrestling now well so now we're uh, Jonathan Snowden from Bleacher Report he contacted me and he was like yeah I kind of want to do a book on indie wrestling in 2019 and uh, he's like what if we just travel a bunch and take photographs and do stories on independent wrestling shows because it's gotten so big now like you have big names yeah. doing it yeah and they're all over the country so i was like absolutely i go count me in 100 percent. if i i mean anything to do so with pro wrestling started, yeah, the, yeah yeah so we went to uh was that the bar one yeah we did the ultimate bar brawl yeah. in atlanta where ken shamrock and tom lawler battled in a bar with no ring like they went off and like under they fought in the toilet yeah. like, it was incredible the next night was an event uh, called uh, Come Hell or High Water, which was during the... It was the first time they've ever done a pro wrestling event the same weekend as the Super Bowl in the host city. And uh, that was awesome. And the promoter, TJ Mac... Uh, MacLoon Productions, they were amazing. Like, so cool to us. And let us do pretty much whatever we want, which is, like, my dream. Uh, so we did that in Atlanta. Then I covered this called Fest Wrestling, and that was in Gainesville. And it was, uh, like super open all about equality and like everyone is welcome it's all love and you had people from all walks of life like anything like you are welcome there which was really really cool which i really really dug because i think like art especially something like pro wrestling should be for everyone uh we went to are you done is it done no just it's all through this year so just started okay so i just got back from tour dates just got back from chicago uh i got a place for you guys to go okay my 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 tag that my tag team partner that I was in a tag team with for twelve years, he runs PCW out in um, it's in California. Love it. Um, it's one of the it's like it's the it's oh, them Joe, right? Joe yeah it's uh, he's the Sheik or oh the the new Sheik yeah. but he just got signed with uh, MLW. Him That's who I shot in Chicago. MLW MLW major they were amazing. Court Bauer and, and the whole crew so, out there, they so were incredible. Samuel. Yeah, I shot, I, know, I was messaging him the other day. He is the coolest dude. That is my tag team partner oh, for 12 man, years. He's, my, tr- he's, he's one of my best friends on the planet. So, what I, I'm sorry. He's a former NWA heavyweight champion, got stripped. I'm going to be a dork now, but 
I was blown away by him and his, his partner, Jacob Fatu, I think. Mm-hmm. It was, okay. The heat they got. So they are so intense. They got the crowd. So he, he had like a pick in his in his boot and he takes it out and he was digging the guy. Yeah. And so uh, someone threw like water or something in the ring or there was a water cup in the ring. So Joseph didn't throw the cup, but he threw the water. Like it came out. I got yeah. a photo of it, just the spray. Crowd went bananas. Started throwing everything. In this venue, they had, <laughs> they had sold Gatorade. They'd sold drinks like this. Yeah. So people were throwing full bottles into yeah. the ring. All oh, sides. So yeah, it yeah. felt like I was in the middle of a riot. I'm not even kidding. It did yeah. not stop. Yeah, yeah. They just kept throwing. And he's yelling at the crowd. And they're yelling at him to like keep bringing it on. That guy was incredible. I even messaged him yeah. like afterwards. Did you take this picture of him? No, I didn't. No. But I, I've he, seen that photo, yeah. He's, he, he's, he's, he sends me... So he sent me the video of the riot, and yeah. I was like, whoa. I had a Gatorade bottle legit going inch from my head. Really? Like half full. And I was like, this is insane. But you I didn't mess- post any of those photos, did you? Uh, I posted a couple, like, but of him like throwing the, Yo, the water right, right, and right, stuff. Right. But I was like, I messaged him on Instagram after like I posted it. I go, I don't know if his Instagram handle, if anyone knows it, please tag these people. Yeah. Um, so I did, and I was like, yo, dude, I'm being honest. Like, that was incredible. Like yeah. the amount of emotion, like they wrestle with emotion. That's my biggest gripe is that people just go through the motions now. Yeah. Right, wrestling right, right. Or doing, I got to get or my they moves in. in slow motion. Have you seen that? That, that uh, no, bullshit? That's, oh, they, yeah, I've seen it. Oh, it's so good. It's like, like, they, super, like, they, like they, they start wrestling like, like they're in the Matrix. Yeah. See, it's still like for me, I was like very anti comedy wrestling. Yeah. Until like Joey Ryan. Yeah, I really was. I was like, I again, do your thing. Don't care. It's just not my thing. Until I saw it in person, and they did an eight-man comedy wrestling, and it was incredible. It was it Kikata- Kik- uh, Kikataro? Yeah, yeah. Well, Japanese comedy wrestling. So, was but it's the like Kai- the way it like brought the crowd. Like we had a minute to chill out and yeah. laugh and have a good time, and then I was like, you know what? This has its place. Plus, Joey Ryan was really good. There was a a, a woman, uh, Wolfie, she, Wolfie in Japan. She's incredible. She's retiring this year, sadly. Kikatara was there. Uh, there's Effie, who is my new favorite wrestler. Uh, <laughs> comes out in like pink tights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the the real uh, homosexual guy that puts people's hands down his pants. I I mean, I'm sure he would do that anyway. <laughs> blonde yeah. Japanese. He's got blonde hair. He's not Japanese. No, that no. is the wrong guy. But he, he wrestles all over the place now. He's my new favorite wrestler just because he is, like, such a, a, a great role model, I think, for anyone. Like, he's yeah. just completely open, doesn't care. Like, we're going to have fun. I'm also going to kick your ass. And I loved it. But, like, then I was like, you know what? This, is a lot of, this has its place. Yeah. But I do miss people, like, wrestling with a purpose. And, like... I get like so like I yeah, sound like I said, such an idiot. No, like, man, why do you care dope. this much? Yeah. Well, no, but, when like, you grow up, fun, but like it's a thing. It's like it's, it's it's like you know. Here's my thing. Like there are people that watch Game of Thrones, yeah. and dragons, and like they'll sit there and go, "Man, I want so and so to be a badass. How come yeah. they have written him in this?" Sh-? And I'm like, you can get worked up about Game of Thrones. I'm gonna get worked up about wrestling. Mm-hmm. So Everyone's it's the same got their thing. Own thing. Yeah, I don't care sure. if you're into dragons. Not my thing. But just let me be into pro wrestling and deal. Joe's with it. company though, out in California, he runs it. He's the booker and does everything for PCW, uh, Pacific Pacific Coast Wrestling. It's top notch. Like um, the guys, some of the guys, most of the guys, or there's a lot of guys like this. Alexander Hammerstone. Yeah, he came from Joe's Joe's show. Um, all, I remember s- Hammerstone because he wrestled in Vegas at FSW. And then I shot his tryout for WWE. I used to shoot the tryouts for like a year. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah up, so in, up at the performance up in Or- center? Yeah, up in Orlando. And Did so- you ever see Hardaway? Did I ever show you the, the company Hardaway? It's Hardaway. a buddy of ours, uh, Joe. And him and a, a couple different other, Joe. It's <laughs> a different Joe. Him and a couple of his buddies started this company Hardaway. And they just take all the old, like, Japanese old school wrestlers. And they, I like, think make I do them know that brand. Yeah. yeah. They just make, like, tons of, like, merchandise and, like, posters and stuff like that. It's super dope. But, like, they go deep, yeah. deep, deep into that, into the whole scene. It's, like, way beyond me. I know only, like, a couple of guys, and, like, I love, like, a lot of the old school guys, but that's Joe way used to train me. at Jocko. Yeah, he used to train with us. He, he, was, he trained you with us. You met him once or twice. No for way. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, the Joe, the one that started Hardaway. Oh, yeah, yeah. okay, no, yeah, no, sorry, no, yeah, yeah. that's why. I was okay. like, not yeah. Joseph. Yeah, no, Joe. If you show me a picture, I'm ama- I'm horrible with names, incredible with faces. Did you ever see the the kaiju wrestling? I remember I showed you the Japanese. Like it's like it's fake wrestling, but the guys all dress up in fake. costumes. Yeah, it is. It's all. <laughs> it's all no. They dress up in costumes, so Sean. one guy will be like a can of Sean, noodles. Sean, help me. 
It's not fake. It's it's scripted. No, it's predetermined. It's not a legitimate like wrestling whole scene, but it was popular for for a year or two. So these guys would dress up like a skyscraper, a can of like oh, chicken noodle soup, like, yeah, yeah. all that stuff, and that was so fucking hilarious. It would be Saturday mornings. I want to say it was like on um, on Sci Fi Network, and they would just do that. And you just turn it I'm not on. I gotta see a picture of this dude because it's gonna annoy me. That if oh, I can't the, of Hardaway. Uh, front of, okay, I'll show you. Well, love it. I'll show you the company. I know the it's company because I remember I've seen like all these cool shirts that I want to get. No, yeah, the the Bruiser Brosy, Bruiser Brody shirts. Joe's got some cool Bruiser Brody yeah, shirts. Yeah, he's got some fucking dope stuff. He's got he's, a, he's got a company a called Bump Drunk. Bump Drunk. Bump Drunk. I think I know that com. one too. I have to check them all but out. But he's got. Problem he, is, I can't explain so, to my wife. Well, let, let me explain. <laughs> hey, yeah, expenses. I just spent two hundred dollars on wrestling shirts. Let Let me explain to you. And also, got, she's like, got her pillows. You got your wrestling. I'm thirty seven. Let me explain oh, to you why you want to get this from Joe, though. Joe has exclusive rights to Brody gear huh. through uh, Mrs. Brody. So here's some of the. Yeah. Um, I have he, to find it. He's later. one of the only people that can sell official. Joe is really connected in the pro wrestling yeah. world. He's um, deep, deep, deep. Like, he's part of the Cauliflower Alley Club. Um, he's just... Joe, after I retired, Joe, like... Took off. Took off. Yeah. He, he, he found that... He found a... Oh, I actually have that shirt. The Masawa shirt. <laughs> <laughs> so that... Yeah. So he, he took off and became, you know, the chic. Yeah. We were we were the 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 market crashers and then black market. Yeah. So this Joe we're talking about. Yeah, yeah this, this is wow. how many this is Joe this is Joseph. Uh, Joseph. This is Joseph's right. company. So um my you at least like partner. say the Instagram to people well, can go look. Well, I don't know. His Instagram, I think, is now Joseph Semiel, but like that bump drunk doesn't have oh, okay. a um, website. A web- no, no. Well, it's got a website, but it doesn't have like social media or anything. Oh, cool. Gotcha. Um, but, uh, but that's what people don't realize how deep it really is. Like, oh man, say, yeah. like so, like I was sitting there and I was watching like ninety one to ninety three WCW, like <laughs> for like no reason. I just got hooked, and so I started watching all the pay per views. Yeah. Like, then I was like sat there. I'm like, what am I doing? If but it's still fun. It's still fun. Dead or alive, what wrestler would you want to shoot? Oh man. Ah. Uh, and when? Like what match? I mean, I I love uh, Liger. I think it'd been cool to shoot Prime Ric Flair. Oh man. Like Prime Ric yeah, Flair. Yeah, you're gonna have to be. Uh. Uh, Jap- Japan uh, Cactus Jack. Yeah. You know, back in yeah, the, yeah. the death match days. Oh, a Prime Vader with the with the oh, with the, with the, with the, with the, the mask, mask, and the yeah. mask. Yeah, and oh, we know we didn't talk about it last week too was uh, uh, Bundy. King Kong passed, Bundy, yeah, yeah, passed away. It's pretty crazy. They're all. It's like the fact that there's any wrestlers alive still is especially is, like the. Like, we're at that age though, where everyone's like gonna be kind of dying soon yeah, that we grew kinda, up with. It's kind of wild. Up. Yeah, it's kind of fucked up when you look at it, especially those guys with the amount so cool. of, like, hell they put their body through. Like, when you hear, like, Jake the Snake's, like, story, like, fuck, you should have died years ago, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, that shit. Did you ever watch the, the DD, uh, yeah, yeah. or the, the what was the documentary? Story yeah, or whatever it was. Man, yeah. that shit will fuck you up. I met him backstage in Vegas, and did I you? was, like, tripping out. So, like, yo, you're Jake the Snake, by the he way. He was up here, like, when did he come here? He came up here, or he was supposed to come I here. I wrestled Jake. Like, a month ago or two months really? ago. Yeah. 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 When was this? Yeah, he didn't uh, kick the shit out of you? Th- no. No, but he... he uh, he DDT Joe. Um, yeah, Joseph. Yeah. <laughs> um, I want to say like 2000... I'm good. 2005 or 6. How sick. Like... Yeah. Not that long ago. I mean... So, like, did he just, like, come up and go... Uh, look, kid. Uh, well, no, no, he did uh, go with it. Yeah, so, I, just, I just so, needed to get the DDT. The, the best, the best story from Jake is Jake uh, had, was walking around with a water bottle, and Joe. Straight vodka. It was straight vodka, but <laughs> nobody knew. No, Joe didn't know, and and Joe was coughing like something had happened where he was coughing yeah. real bad. And Jake goes, "Here, take, <laughs> here, drink this," and gave him the, the fucking vodka. And Joe slams it and is like. Bleh. He was not expecting Jake and Jake sitting there laughing his ass off, <laughs> yeah. like that, like just. Fuck. 
So here, here's so everyone says this guy's this person may be my father. Uh, Jake the Pro Snake Roberts. No, there's a chance Jake the Snake Roberts is your father. Harley Race. Harley Race. Yeah, I could see it. No, 100. percent He looks like what's his face from. Uh... And then here as well. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like everyone says, did your mom? I'm like, no. I not that I know of. But I mean, look, look at he's got the no, same. No, 100. percent Your mom would have been in the Harley Race. Though, yeah, for sure. Who wouldn't? I think the belt greatest belt. wrestler on God's green earth. That belt is dope. That's 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 the belt my my partner Joe yeah. won. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He uh or had stripped from him. That's an the interesting NWA story. Belt? Yeah, you need to listen. They actually did a movie, NWA, before Billy Corgan bought it. Yeah. Uh did this like documentary on the belt and everybody shits on Joe because really? he didn't give it up. He was he, Oh, I remember you telling me this. Yeah, yeah he didn't give day. it up because of the you know, there was a lot it, the back dealing. Dude, it was it was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. So like there's a lot of people that don't like Joe for that. Like Adam Pierce. Oh, sure. Doesn't like Joe. Well, he's um, a, he was a big time NWA champ for a long time, or held yeah. it multiple times, and now, now he works for WWE. But he like Colt Cabana doesn't like Joe. Just well, now be- I don't like Joe. <laughs> yeah, fuck him. I thought I liked him. Now I don't. But it, it was it was this happened. But you've been to the to the training uh-huh. grounds here too. Like so, you who'd you shoot up there? Uh, well, I shot all the tryouts. Yeah. That's so right. like uh, they came down to the gym to look for talent, um, and so and they got one. They did. They did. Who? Um, Nick. Nick. Nick the Tooth. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, he was up there for a while. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that guy. Yeah. All right. I'm you know thinking Nick the Tooth from Jiu-Jitsu. No, like, not that Nick the Tooth. not that Nick the Tooth. Then uh, What's-Her-Face, too. Like, she was about to go in there. Uh, Katya. Remember the tall, tall kickboxing? Yeah. Oh, the seven-foot yeah, tall she was. She was about to, like, I well, remember my boy, she was doing everything. My boy, Sabby, went up there, and he's wrestling as Tino Sabatelli, so he got a gig mm-hmm. up there. Um so they like were at the gym and they're like we started talking and like I started talking because they're like oh WWE guys they started talking to me and they're like you know since you know wrestling maybe you, if you see someone you can let us know and I was like yeah no of course I know what you're basically looking Ryan for Ryan Loco the wrestling promoter and then like I'm sitting in my car and I, like, I hear this like knock on the window I roll down and he's like hey you know if you ever want to like come we have tryouts we need a photographer and like you love wrestling so you can do it if you want and I was like he yeah. played it cool. He played it cool. Oh, yeah. It's like, it's like, it's like, I don't know, I, I don't know if I have time. Oh, yeah, who knows? So I, I don't like, know. So then uh, I remember, like, they set it up, and I went, like, a, two months later to the tryout, and uh, I drive up, and, like, the performance center is, like, you can get there, but you're not supposed to be there. Like, you know, it's, like, you're not allowed in, obviously. Right, No right, one can right. go in. So I just remember, like, driving up, not knowing how to get in, not knowing where the front door technically was, if, like, anything was set up. So I, like, hit the button. Knock on the front door. I'm like looking around. So like, if you're looking on a camera, I look like a fucking yeah, like fanboy well, stalker. And, and, and there was somebody that tried. Yeah, to, yeah, yeah. Someone broke in. Like broke, it's crazy. Yeah. So I just remember, that, and all of a sudden the door opens, and it's Hugh Morris, and he goes, "What do you want?" And I was like, "I'm, I'm supposed to be taking photos." And he's like, "Oh, you're the photographer. Okay, come on in." <laughs> and I was like. <gasps> So then uh, I set up and did like all their, their tryout stuff, and it's just funny because like these, they'd be full gear, yeah. But then they'd be like super nervous because they're trying out, and like they thought probably that I was a WWE employee, so uh, like oh man, I can't screw up in front of this guy. Uh, they, they probably did the whole handshake too. Oh yeah, well I actually love that. I love that. You everyone, love the handshake. I love that everyone shakes hands. Well, yeah. that no 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 yeah, but did they give you the wrestler handshake? Oh, what's the wrestler handshake? Where there's no oh like limp. Like it's this. it's this <laughs> no why like, did they do that well the, the history of that is is when you shake hands and you get to know somebody uh-huh. that you want them to know to have that, a firm grip no 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 uh-huh. you have to be light uh-huh. because it lets you know that in the ring right you're not gonna you're a light worker right i never did that shit. <laughs> I, I was always a light worker right but I, I, if I'm shaking your hand, if we're meeting, yeah, we're I'm, gonna, I, like I'm gonna be, I'm gonna meet you like a fucking man, and and, and but the, you know, there's certain, but it is there, that is, and it, it kind of happens. What's funny is to bring it back to jujitsu, which we are on jujitsu radio. That does happen we have a n- lot. Just nonstop jujitsu talk today. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, 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 half the time it doesn't even go. We start with jujitsu, and go to and then it just go into all. How many kinds people of go? Shit. Yo, I listened to your podcast today. You guys we, don't really we waited do 45 minutes for you to talk about jujitsu. No, actually, they. 
they love it when we fucking go off on each other most oh, of the time. I can see that. But yeah. I actually keep going because that was something else I wanted to bring but up. But that does happen on the jujitsu mat. Like when when people come like like people still do that like open mat. They'll come through and shake everybody's hand. Yeah. No, and, I still do that. Yeah. I still do that. Everybody. Like, well, I a think lot of like it's do. a respect thing. You're in someone else's yeah. house. The least you could do is show respect. And then but also can, like. Okay. No, I was just gonna say like it's with the soft hand thing too. It's like usually the toughest people don't. They know they're tough and don't have to prove it. Yeah. So they're, they're just like and same as like. You'll get guys that come in the gym that'll be like training six months. Like, yeah, I want to be a world champion one day. Oh, I want to roll with the toughest guy. Then you got a guy that's been in black belt for probably 10, 15 years, and it's just like, oh, you know, I just want to move a little bit. Like, oh, yeah. whoever you want, I'm, you know, it's your. Well, and especially. Then you're like, wow. Yeah. You find out who they are. You're mm-hmm. like, whoa, you could have, like, yeah. done whatever you wanted. Well, especially at Jocko. How many times did you sit there and see someone coming, like, oh, it's just, yeah, I was supposed to come and roll with the pros? And Henry's like, where'd you train? Okay, you want to come in? Like, go ahead, come in. And there'd be like the come biggest jokers. Meet, come in on meat night. Meat night is the worst, man. And then I remember, I forget who it was. Some kid came in, wanted to act super tough, and it was on like a fucking Friday. And they just put him in the ring of death. And they chopped this man's legs apart. Do you remember what I'm talking about? It was I like, think I remember the leg one. There was one at the old, old gym where this guy came in and like he was like, with a manager or something yeah. and the guy was like well my guy's a Muay Thai world champion multiple times so like I don't know if you guys can handle him like okay we'll come back Friday night no problem come back Friday and was Cosmo there at the time do you remember might have been yeah. this was, this was, this was <laughs> way back in the day at the level 5 at the level 5 no before no, no, that Imperial, oh, yeah. Like Imperial. Imperial yeah and uh, you remember like it was that square of mat yeah. like, it was really small and so it came in on meet night two rounds in his guy pulls him out I was like okay he's done he can't take anymore like because they're like when you come in with an attitude oh yeah you're getting fucked up and the best part was when I knew that was happening and I could just like sit there and just watch <laughs> you had like, the camera front, ready front row oh, seat just someone getting murdered that's the thing I always tell everybody because like I started taking a couple of photos there too or I'd go to other gyms like you get the best fights of all time just being in the gym like because you never know who's going to come in you never know who's going to spar who. So all of a sudden you watch like Rumble spar against like Kamaru. I saw Rumble, Overeem. I yeah. saw Tyrone Spung and Gokan Saki. I saw Spung and Overeem. Like I saw amazingly like incredible things. And half I, the people, like people don't even know half the photos that you have. That's yeah, the best part. It's a lot of fun. Got very lucky. See, that's the thing that always like I always like dig it is the fact that. Dig it. You, yeah. You think about the. 180 degrees. Yeah, and then another 360. <laughs> and the beat goes on, and the beat goes on. Actually, I got the belt over there. Get a belt. I have the other belt. Yeah, I got the other belt. But that's no, it's like belt. the amount of oh, fo- you know. the, the amount of photos that probably are just hidden out there of when like Ali was down in Miami at the South Beach gym, or like who knows any other like the the New York gyms and stuff with just the crazy ass photos and like fights that you might see in there. It's like that's the part that I, I dig the most, knowing that I probably have some photos that no one will ever see of some of like the most amazing matchups. It's insane. Like you have, I think one of the the photos that I find the most interesting was the one that you have of Rashad when he's cutting weight mm-hmm. and he's like dead in the bathroom. Yeah, there was like uh, one of the worst ones was yeah. uh, Kenny Florian cutting weight yeah. for. Uh, might have been Jose Aldo. Was he? Did they fight in Houston? I'm so bad. My no, it's way back. That's like. So Kenny, anyway, he, yeah. I'm pretty sure. I'm just telling you, no, we don't we don't fact check anything. Okay, yeah. cool. So, so yeah, he was fighting. Good. He, he could, yeah. yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure he was fighting <laughs> Jose Aldo in Houston. If not, I'm sorry, but I just I, my brain is awful for that sort of thing, and uh, he was cutting weight, and uh, <laughs> so I have photos of him like in his tr- in the in the the sweatsuit, you know, to, yeah. you know the plastics. And he just looked like death. And, like, he was laying on the floor, and his brother's there holding his head, and they're, like, putting ice water on his forehead and, like, talking to him. And, like, it was horrific. Yeah. And, like, there's certain moments where I'm sitting there, like, you know, it's dead quiet, and then you hear... (laughs) (laughs) And, like, Kenny's, like, really glad that I was there, and he's, like, really appreciative that I took the photos. In the moment, it's, like, very difficult because you're like, man, I'm screwing up this moment, or they want to be private. But at the end of the day, everyone's always been like, you know, I'm glad you were there. Yeah. But there's just those hard times in the moment. Like one time, Lance Palmer was cutting weight. And I could see, like, his camp. One of the guys was like, you know, like, give me the hand. Like, you know, maybe don't shoot this. And I was like, trust me. I know Lance. Don't worry. Yeah. I, I, I promise. And then afterwards, Lance was like, yo, I'm so glad you were there. I'm glad you captured this. Thank you so much. 
Yeah, because it's 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 something that people don't get. They don't get that view, right? Of how w- what sacrifice these people are making for. Yes, it's for glory. Um, you know, it's for their own glory. But at the same time, it's for entertainment. That it's so these people can be entertained by them punching each other in the face as hard as they can, mm-hmm. and that's not, it's not an easy life. An awful and, life. And like for my aspect though, like when I do it, I remember at the beginning it was always the, I feel bad like when someone's injured or like cut and coming up and taking the photo. I was like, no, this is the ones that actually like usually mean the most. When someone's got that giant gash over their head or they're sitting there, they just got their arm snapped. Those are the ones that most people like end up looking back and seeing like, fuck, I can't believe that happened. The but, hardest thing is that uh, like a lot of times two people I know will be fighting. Yeah. And so like someone will just lost and like I'll have to go up to them as they're law in the corner slouched over taking photos and then the other guy that I know that just want him taking he's like give, shaking my hand it's like I know they understand but it's still a very weird situation yeah, yeah. and then like also like how do I post a photo of my buddy who just got his ass kicked or how do I post a photo of the guy who won that, that beat my buddy without my buddy thinking that like I'm yeah, making fun of him sides. or anything like that yeah. so it's like that's the hardest part for me because I don't want to make anyone where do you, upset. Where do you post yeah. your photos? Like, is that at, at, at a web, your website? Well, I have my website, so I do a blog on there usually after every event, so I post photos up on there. And then obviously for organizations I shoot for, it goes up on their site or their Facebook. Um, a lot of times, just on my Instagram, I really like posting on Instagram. Like Twitter I use for fun, and I just mess around on Twitter, and I like I like to make people mad on Twitter. That's my favorite thing. Oh, he's thing. a solid troll. You gotta like you gotta follow him. He's a solid well, troll. He'll I, he'll talk I, I have to Twitter on my phone and You're not I, missing I open anything. up yeah. once in a while. Just, I just like to like I say things that are so blatantly stupid sometimes that if people get mad or correct me, I'm like yeah. in shock. Like I'm like this is so Oh, they don't get it. Yeah, and I misspell Connor McGregor's name on purpose every time. <laughs> <laughs> Every time, just to see people correct me, like that's the only reason I do it. Or the you had the year of the jet ski, right? Yeah, yeah. Where I had a fake jet ski, and I talked about how I was going to take the jet ski out. It's like, oh, I it's also raining. talked about. Damn, I was wanting to take the jet ski out today too. Uh, oh well, I guess <laughs> I'll wait till next uh, weekend. I actually, because I didn't have a way to transport the jet ski, I actually sold the jet ski to get a jet ski trailer. So then I had to just wait so I could save more money to buy a jet ski. Smart. Right. But oh, now yeah. I had the trailer. Chicken, chicken, yeah. chicken and egg. Yeah. It was, area. It, was like, it was like a solid year yeah, I just, of where he was going with this. Because at first I was like, why did Ryan buy a fucking jet ski? And then I started reading the other ones. Oh. I hate I the water. <laughs> I don't go in the water. I have no care to go in the water. But... And where are you from originally? San Diego. <laughs> you son of a bitch. Well, that's why. <laughs> He's from San He's Diego. He lives in Florida. There. Because I tried to get him to come out. He's like, "Oh, come take like the some like surf photo stuff." He's like, "Fuck that! So like, you can have that." He's like, "Yeah, I do these. You can do the surf photography. Do it all like, you want. I have no I, I don't want to be in the water. I don't like the beach." Well, h- here's my question: Why don't you sell your photos? So I was like, my wife yells at me all the time, all the time. I'm like, oh, obviously, I mean, I mean, any reason. Yeah. <laughs> I deserve it. So don't, it's not like she's bad. I yeah. deserve it. Um, so like. I like to think of like my photos like and it's just a personal thing like I uh, my photos to me are very special and they mean something and so I'm like if I just sell my photos then now it's like a $20 photo and now it's everywhere so like I want when you have a photo of mine up on the wall you feel special like that magazine I made a hundred of them that's it never be made again done so like if that was everywhere I'm like okay it's kind of cool down. but whatever yeah. so like I want like you can't buy one of my photos. You can like donate to a rescue, usually for dogs. And at the, again, you have to catch me at the right time. Like, there's people like, "Hey, can I get this photo?" I'm like, "No, sorry, I don't sell them." And then all of a sudden, one day, dude, I love this photo. All right, cool, man. If you, you know, I don't even tell the amount. I go just donate to a dog rescue, and I'll send it to you. And you're the only person I'll ever have that photo. I'll never print it again because I want it to be special. Like, there, there will eventually, be, I'm sure, come a time where I'll do a very limited run, like five or ten, because I just don't want people to have a bunch of them. I don't want anyone to be like, this is a cool photo, and there's 5,000 of them floating around. You well, can get like, them anywhere. Even like that one, the one with Joe Schilling, you have that one up in the Joe Rogan studio. Yeah, so I've made four, I think, yeah. of that. Four prints of the, that. Uh, it's a, it's a four-square uh, yeah. shot of uh, Schilling it's a sequence, smoking. Right? Yeah. yeah. Smoking a cigarette after his glory fight in Virginia, actually. Same same event yeah. as this. 
And uh, so I sent one to Rogan because he's a big Joe Schilling guy. And uh, well, he talked about it. I remember yeah. he talked about it, and then like a couple episodes later, and like it popped up. I was like, hey, I know that fucking photo. Yeah. So like, there was only four of those made, and that's it. I'll never do that four square piece again. There was only a hundred of that magazine made, so that magazine's done. I'm doing a new magazine, which will be more yeah. readily available, but that's the only like. And again, that was completely donations to a dog rescue. I yeah. didn't make any money off that. Like. Much to my wife's <laughs> <This way. laughs> disappointment. I don't know. What you might want to do going forward is making it so it doesn't cost you money. Where you yeah, I didn't. No, cost. I didn't lose any money. You didn't lose the money. Yeah, okay. I just I just wanted so I have no profit. Like I was yeah. like everything. All the profits went to the dog rescue. Like, you did the the painting thing where the guys like punch through the painting. Yeah, so I made like I got into a, I got into these weird brain faces. Like lately, I've been doing lots of stuff with gels and like and the weird like dragging of the camera, and it's just because my brain gets tired. Like I, yeah. I shoot stuff. Shot in that gym a million times. Like I right. shoot in that gym with my eyes closed, and they're all like all the photos are gonna be solid and look the same. So yeah. I'm like, I gotta do something different. So one time I was like, I'm gonna start painting. Don't know how to paint. Still don't know how to paint. Not a good painter. But I would just like sit there and just get inspired. Turn everything off. Look at the canvas. And like, yo, whatever happens, happens. Blah, blah, blah. Cool. This one's for Tyrone. And then I had Tyrone like punch it. So like the hole through the painting was Tyrone's punch. He signed it. And so I did that with him. I did that with Vitor. I did yeah. that with Rashad, and then sold those, and all the proceeds went to charity. But yeah, the thing is, again, the highest, which one got the highest? Oh, uh, I think the Vitor one went for like two hundred fifty bucks, something yeah. like that. Which is like, man, if I would have had the money back then, I definitely would have bought that Vitor one. That Vitor one would have been dope to have. So it's like, but then again, like now if someone has something where they're like, this is like, it's unique. What other person has a painting of? That was inspired by Vitor, punched by Vitor. Then I had yeah. a photo of him punching through it that they got with it as well. So it's like a whole story. You see, like, that's that's the cool part. I remember when, when you did that, too. It was pretty cool. And I guarantee I'm going to be on my deathbed. Like, I should have just made money. <laughs> I'm so stupid. No. Yeah, because by, by that you. time, they'll be able to catalog, like, so, like some AI will be able to say, well, you could have made this much money from these so photos. Stupid. Yeah. But you know what's funny? There's the guy that shot the Beatles. There's a whole documentary on this guy. I forget what it was. Yeah, did he get arrested? No. The guy that shot John Lennon? No, not that way, dumb dumb. The the guy that photographed you the Beatles. Be, you gotta you kinda gotta be specific when you say no. that now. This guy photographed the Beatles, he was like famous for it. It's like his whole thing was obviously he had like a family and kids and they would just call him and say, he'd go take a photo and he'd just go take out. So there's a famous photo of them like pillow fighting, they're all jumping, beating the crap out of each other. He took them. He took all these like historical photos. He's like I just went. I just went. I, they called me up. I just get up and go. And, like, to hear his mindset on taking all these photos, he wasn't super duper, like, creative, but he always managed to be at these really unique times in history and just photograph it. That stuff is super crazy. Well, as, that's the stuff that I dig. As photographers, what oh, do you guys think? him, not me. Well, you're both photographers. I mean, I'm good with my phone, but. I'm, um, I'm an artist. <laughs> That's that guy, but, you know I mean? I'm a painter. What, what, what Hello. Is, what, did you I just hear me? I just click a button. What What is more, um, I guess, uh, satisfying? The actual shoots or the candid moments? Uh, I always said that my favorite thing in the world is when someone comes up to me and goes, I didn't even know you were taking a photo. Like, and they're like, oh, here's a photo of you with your son. And they're like, I didn't even know you were taking a photo at that time. Or like, oh, the shot of like someone's arm or like, you know, with their mom. Like, there's a photo of Tyrone backstage in, uh, yeah, Istanbul. So we're in Istanbul, and he's not just, Constantinople. Uh, Istanbul. It's Constantinople. No, Istanbul. It's a long time Istanbul. gone, though. I'm right? just saying. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So uh, we're back. He just won his first fight. He's waiting for his second fight, and there's a photo of like him sitting there, sta- like just staring in the locker room, and his mother, like you know, she's being a mom. Like, right, it doesn't right, matter. Right. Like, doesn't matter who the fuck it is. It's not Tyrone Spong the kickboxer. It's Tyrone, my son. You know. I don't care if it's a world champion kickboxer. That's my yeah, baby. She'll never, he'll yeah. never just be a, that. Right. Yeah. Just got into a fight. And so she's like hugging him. And like there's a picture. And she's like touching his face. And I got a photo of that. And I love that photo because it's like this special moment. And then like afterwards, he was like, oh, you know. And then, and then he shattered his leg. This is when he kicked the, Saki. Oh, Saki. Yeah. yeah. So like much later, I showed him the photo. And he was so grateful because he was like, you know, get that moment with him and his mom. Didn't even know I took it. And like those are the best moments. Yeah. Today. Like when someone's like, I didn't know you were taking that photo. Well, even that one in the in the book, you have the photo with Rigando, right? Taking, uh, I think it's like his mom holding pads or something. No, no, that was with uh, I forget the guy's name, but his nickname is the Mama's Boy. So uh, we're down yeah, in yeah, Miami yeah. at the High Lie Courts, yeah, or High Lie Casino, that's courts or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so they're having boxing there. So we're sitting back there, 
and uh, Floyd Mayweather is there, uh, senior, not junior, and uh, he's being loud and yelling and all this stuff. And then I look over, and this woman has these giant heels on, and she's like with a boxer. And like I see that it says Mama's Boy on his his cape, on his uh, robe. So I'm like, okay, like uh, I'm putting two and two together. And then all of a sudden she puts pads on. I'm like, what? What is going on? And like, doesn't she, take off the heels. Doesn't take yeah. off the heels. Like that was the most shocking thing to me. Like, there's no way I could even stand upright in those shoes. And then she's just holding pads like a super stud. And I was like, I gotta get a photo of this. So like that, I love that photo too. That was really yeah. no, that one's cool. That's like the um, I think it's the the last page. Yeah, I think it's the, the back cover. Mama's boy. Yeah, that's the tough part. It's like because I want to hang it up, but there's so many photos. It's like you kind of like taking it away from it. But like to me, at least it's like because I learned so much from him. It's like all right, I'll take the Joe Schilling one. I'll put all it. Right, up th- there. This is one for both of you then, because it'll it'll be an interesting one. If you could have just one photo that represented you and your photography, just one of the photos that you've taken, what would it be? Ooh. Wow. You could only pick one. Like, this is going down into the annals of history. Yeah. As, okay, this is, this is the work of Ryan Loco, or this is the work of Alexis Tarosa. What one picture? I, I'm nowhere near the amount of photos. It doesn't you matter. You have a <laughs> like, photo. No, There's yeah. got to be a photo that you've taken that you go, that's me. You know what's funny, though, with his photos? I know it's his. I know 100%. Did you see where I tagged you the other day? Oh, on the Henzo Gracie yeah. one. Henzo yeah. posted a photo. I was like, I didn't even need to look at the background. I was like, oh, Ryan, there's your photo. <laughs> uh, man, that is so difficult. Yeah. And it's like not even that like it doesn't it would it probably wouldn't be it, it'd be anything, any of the photos that you've taken. It doesn't even have to be one that's out there. Yeah, I don't even like know like where I would begin, and it's not even like I think like all my photos are great or anything. It's just more like I don't like I don't know if one can encapsulate my style because I I like to think of myself as like someone that could do anything. Like you literally drop me anywhere, tell me you need good photos, I'm gonna make it happen, and so right. But man, I think that. uh there's a shot of uh man fuck yeah <laughs> it's so typical yeah. there's a shot of, again it's joe Schilling because he's so photogenic there's a shot of joe coming in uh after a fight walking backstage and like he's just got this intense look on his face he's all sweaty the way the light hit him and like so many people have been like yo that's that's the shot like that's the shot showing intensity that's the shot showing a guy that's just been into a fight so, I mean, that's the first one that pops in my head. And the thing is, like, it changes every day. Right. Yeah. And also, like, I look back at every photo, and I hate every photo I take because I find something wrong, something oh, else I, I should have so done. I feel so bad now when I do that. All right, oh, cool. I think, like, that, like, people are like, oh, do you ever look back years ago? I go, I look back yesterday. Do you keep, like, all the raw photos and stuff? Like, yeah. Yeah, I go back, yeah. And so, like, and, but then, then the thing is you – Thank God for digital, right? You, yeah, you evolve <laughs> in, like, your taste change as you get older. And so, like, there will be photos that I look back on. I'm like, I should edit this way. And then I find myself looking at photos from seven years ago that I'm re-editing. I'm like, why? I'm not even going to repost this. <laughs> yeah. But in my brain, I'm like, I got to fix this one. Now I got to fix yeah. this one. Now I got to fix this one. And so, like, your style completely changes. And so, like, I understand why, like, you know, a band will come out with that album where you're like, this. Remastered. What the hell happened? Like, yeah. you guys used to be good. And then now you're coming out with this. And it's like, because your brain, you get older and yeah, you have experiences change, and man. things change. You know what? You... It, my, my favorite band in the world changes, but only subtly. Like, if you listen, if you, if Who's you your hear favorite band in the world, Clutch. Oh, okay. If you hear their first album, it sounds nothing like their latest album. Totally different. They've even brought horns into it. Oh, so they're a ska band. Sick. Yeah. <laughs> but if you listen down the line, in order, you hear the progression. You hear the progression, and they're not. They're different, but they're not that different. They're still in their lane. But it's funny when bands like, like I remember when Metallica's Load came out. Oh, they got shit on like for years yeah. because of that. And like they got crap even from the hairdo. And like, oh, you guys cut your hair, you cut know? your hair, and all. And that And I was stuff. like the biggest Metallica fan. Like I yeah. followed it all the way through. It's like, what is wrong with you guys? And the they did good. Saint Anger, and they had the drums. Yeah, well, but, Saint dude, Anger was like a whole different thing altogether. Yeah, it wasn't well, even like, mixed. Well, just like know, we went in, we recorded. Saint and Anger was like, like a 
a stab to get back at like the record like companies. no 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 i mean like tr- like it was like a half ass attempt to get back to their but there's like s- a, there's original a whole sound. Oh, no it's a whole different thing because they they worked with bob rock on those like three albums and then saint anger came around they wanted to go a whole different route and that's when the band was about to break up too so they were all going through like really shitty um like uh group counseling right, right, right. and What's they're that? all trying to get sober they're trying to like stick with their wives there's a whole different thing like if you ever watch the documentary it's fucking horrible yeah. some kind of monster some kind of monster like imagine being a band for 20 something years you were on top of the world now everybody's breaking down cuz you're like older you're changing so you bring in the dorkiest corniest white dude guidance counselor like therapist you're a heavy metal band like the fucking heavy metal band in history and you're sitting there looking at a new album and he gives you the pointers of what he thinks like you should take to the, the album the direction you should take the album can you imagine that like you would like, and you no. watch it. They have it on video. Watch the video. No, I've, I've like, seen. I've seen it's it. It's like it made me go, "Oh my god, I don't want to know this much about." You don't want to pull the curtain back that far. Yeah, no, not they that it far. Back. They pulled it all. Like, I know, was, but like sometimes, like good. you don't want to know how the food's made. You yeah, know I mean? yeah. Like, no, sometimes. but it's that's one of those things. that's totally different. Like that's nobody wants to see that part but of death the music. Magnetic, like I don't ever want to see James Hetfield like crying. No, vacuuming. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't yeah. know. I don't know. What, I've never seen that doc. I know what you're talking oh, about. I just there. haven't seen it. But it's that's like there. I don't want to see it. Like it's just not something that I, like like watching Ozzy back in the day on on this is the Ozzy yeah. yeah, where oh. he's like a mumbling fool. He's mumb- like and he's just like doing random that's the, shit. And that's that, like, the downside of like everything. It's like like we were talking about with Michael Jackson. There's yeah, an aura. Mystique. You build that mystique. You build it like that guy is like who knows like Prince. Like Prince is one of the few people where he kept it. And it was like, even to this day, you're not going to hear about half the shit he did. It's like, what, well, he just say, wanted a fucking say camel he, they, at like 2 o'clock in the morning? But, but, they, but they said he left a catalog of music that he could, they could release an album a year for the next 50 yeah, he, years. Yeah, he recorded tons, like and tons and tons of songs. He made full-on music videos and stuff, and that would come out. But then they won't tell you that he went and he sold, like right before he died, he sold a ton of shit, and all the money went to like a children's hospital. Like, well, you know, he hear. used to, he was a Jehovah's Witness, yeah. and he used to go and knock on doors. Mm-hmm. Imagine you're sitting, you're sitting at home. I'm converting. You, I'm you get converting. a knock Let's on do your door, and you open it, and it's Prince, and he goes, do you have time to talk about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? For sure. Come in. Yes, but do you have time to talk about Purple the rain. revolution? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, can I ask you about Apollonia? No, it's a, that's you can't do all that crazy shit. Like open it up to the fans. It's not. No. But you. you but lose it's like it. it's, it's a it weird all. thing nowadays. Celebrities a weird thing nowadays because if you're too private, you're you you don't reach certain levels. You have to be accessible to a certain point. Mm-hmm. That's the thing, though. You lose the the. You can always win, if you leave the fans wanting more. It's no different than like with his photos. You leave people wanting more, but if you sat there and put them all out there, you're gonna get bored of it. Like you're, you're just gonna get bored of it. Like, even with Michael Jackson, how many times you're gonna hear the same shit over and over again? But if you have the mystique where he's like comes out with a new album when every five years, you'd be like, oh shit. Well, now what about think about it. like Wu Tang Clan? Like they yeah. didn't have an album for how many years? And then the second that Triumph came out, oh my god, fucking Wu Tang. Well, what, what about? Well. I, you know what I'm waiting for? I'm waiting for an actual new Guns N' Roses album. Not Axl Rose and uh, a, a never gonna studio band. Either. They just they just released a song that they did. Yeah, that's not the same. But it's it, I want an actual Guns N' Roses Duff album. Slash Axl yes, you and are. Fucking, what's they, they just released a song. They just Slash released... Slash would have to be hurting for so much fucking money for him to do They're that. They're doing the tours. The actual tours, they're they're they've buried hatchets, and I think, dude, age like we were talking about, age changes you, man. No brokenness changes you. <laughs> None of those guys are broke. <laughs> Axel for sure is broke on some aspect. He beat the shit out of Tommy Hilfiger. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. No, he didn't. Look it up. No, he did. We not. don't fact check. I want to fact he check. He did not. It was oh Tommy, Tommy Hilfiger jumped him. Yeah, and he didn't do anything. He didn't do he shit. He just like no, dude. He just like just laughed at him. He almost beat the crap out of Kurt Cobain. 
Man, he's fucking crazy. I love that see, guy. See, like, may he rest in peace. <laughs> may he rest in peace. <laughs> Just throw it in there. Did you, you never wanted to shoot music? Music was never your thing? What are you uh, talking about? <laughs> He's got one of the fucking most insane photos of Kanye West. He's a rapper. Um, yeah. No, I mean, I, when I was in Vegas, I shot some stuff for T-Mobile, some concerts there, and I've shot a couple other concerts. And so, well, like, it's not your passion. Music isn't, like... Uh, just depends on who it is. Like, I mean, again, it's one of those things where if you said you need to go photograph this band and I don't like them, I'm still going to, like go as if it's like my favorite band that's what happened with candle box i had him come and take a photo of candle box when i used to work with candle box it's like hey ryan you want to take a photo yeah sure didn't know any candle box song like, yeah why not i'll go do it if you what's your favorite band though that you would want to shoot oh man uh it can be a rapper don't, no, don't. i just like uh i mean i shot I, i'm a big alkaline trio guy and i shot them i was a big bayside guy i shot them uh, there's really no one. I just like want to shoot cool shows. Like it's a just, social like, deal, like Mike Ness from. But I feel like that'd be boring, and I don't mean really? that in a bad way. I just feel like it's, Mike it's Ness is just gonna done. stand there. Yeah, right? yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? It'd be dope to see like your coverage of like a Daft Punk show. Yeah, I would love to. Like so that's the thing. Like I would want you to go. Here's a camera. There's Daft Punk. Yeah. Daft Punk has said you just can do go. whatever you want. Yeah, just and so go. then I'd have a blast. Eighties hair metal. Like if you could go back oh, in man, time. Oh man, Guns and Roses. And shoot eighties hair metal. Oh. Or Poison Show. Poison oh. Show. Or oh, Motley Crue Show. I saw Motley Crue a couple years ago down in the Hard Rock and I was in shock at how crazy oh, their show the was good. and like the flames and everything. Yeah. Like Poison's still good. Yeah. Poison's still good. If you can get CC. I wanna know moving. how Vince Neal just said fuck it and I'm just gonna eat whatever I want just cause it's Vince Neal like he didn't yeah, shit I, you would he think like, though he volunteered he was like the second person to put out a sex tape ever he was like oh wait sex tapes make you famous let me go rent best, a shitty best motel best part about Vince Neal was his cameo in uh, the adventures of Ford Fairlane I've never watched that wow either. that's oh, a my. blast back never seen you've that. never seen the adventures of Ford Fairlane no. never is that Andrew Dice Clay it. yes yeah it was basically... Oh, you know why I know that? Because uh, there was a Billy Idol song that yes. went along with that. Rock the Cradle of Love. Rock the Cradle of Love. Basically, what, so, what they did... music they, videos back in the day used to be on the show called... used to be on a channel called MTV. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Well, but I, they, they I, took, I thought I actually worked there. And basically, they took Dice's act and, and put, it in a movie. put it into a movie I where he was a talking about. private eye for... Yeah. Rock and roll. He's the rock and roll private eye. Yeah. The best part of the movie was Al Bundy. Um, Ed O'Neill, Jiu Jitsu Black Belt. Ed Jiu Jitsu Radio. Jiu Jitsu Radio. Ed O'Neill played, de- played an actual cop detective and who had a huge beef with Ford Fairlane. Yeah. Because he was in a disco band <laughs> in the 70s and he was famous for a song called Booty Time, Booty Time, Cross the USA. Never heard Spoiler that. Spoiler alert. Spoiler. Don't worry, I'm not watching. By the way, we'll, I'm never, I, I'm, if something has been out more than two years, uh, fuck you, I'm not doing spoiler I'm alerts. Shit. Hey, let me ask you a question. So how about that uh, Conor McGregor in Miami? Yeah. How fucking nuts is that? I mean, is it wasn't your boy like, here? Like, yeah, hey, he's down here taking photos and didn't hit you up, huh? Yeah, yeah, I don't. I mean, he might still be down here. I don't know. Well, I mean, I know it might Connor be, is. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. So it's like it's one of those things where it's like it's not a big deal, but it's a big deal because of other Who things he's done. Yeah, you know right, I mean? right, right. Like it was an isolated incident. Like if Connor had never gotten in, in any trouble, it wouldn't have been that who big. Who cares? He needs anger management. No, it's not that. It's that he needs someone to fucking keep an eye out for him. Like, that's what he needs. He just should not be at live. At 5 o'clock in the morning. Ever. Yeah, ever. Go once. But I went once, I'm and thinking, I was like, I'm done. I don't yeah. need to go to live ever again. It's like, I ain't got the money for your $30 it's funny, I don't drinks. even know what live is. I know it's, it's a nightclub blue. now, but... Yeah, it's nightclub. I, like, I've, I've been out once in, in Scarlet's? Miami. Scarlet's. Rachel's? King of Diamonds. No, like, the night started at... Um, KOD's? No, uh, what's the steakhouse cut... Or uh, Scarlet, Chima. Rachel's. No, 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 no. The other one, like it's got numbers on it. Prime One Twelve. Right. Wow. Started Oof. started at Prime One Twelve. Big Must money. Must be nice. <laughs> Big it, money. Well, it was it was it was for clients. I was meeting clients. Wow. So oh, now we have trouble. clients. Wow. Yeah, Jeez. Clients. No, I didn't get in trouble. When you were singing, uh, when you got smacked or whatever it was. 
no. We talked about it last. No, year. no, anyway, no, no. Keep this, going. No, Tracy wasn't involved. Okay. This, I was down there with with the guys I worked with. Right. Clients. And we and clients. No, I, and then we were meeting clients. Oh, meeting clients. It was a business uh, dinner. Business. It was a business dinner, and then oh, they wanted right to right Canadians, right and they wanted oh, to go Canadian. out. Oh, of course. And so we went out for the night, and to Scarlet. Oh, boot that, huh? We went to like three different clubs, and I was like, after this, after the third one, they were staying, and I'm like, I'm going back to the hotel, bro. They're like, it's only one o'clock. I'm like, yeah, it's one o'clock. I'm yeah. old. Power nap, man. That's where you get a power nap before you go. I don't like going out. I don't. So what do you all that? So what do you think happened? What do you think happened? I'm sure he was like probably coming out of the club at 5 a.m. and he was just like maybe a little out of it, tired, drunk, whatever he was, and like uh, someone probably like I'm sure the fan is gonna be like, I just took a nice little photo. Of Connor, yeah, but they're probably like he shoved the phone in yeah. Connor's face or something like that because like fans are psycho. Man. You don't they think it was it. Connor and maybe lady of the night, l- a, a lady uh, friend? Well, like they're trying to get him for that bullshit. There's like somebody yeah, I forget who it was. Yeah. There's somebody on Twitter that's trying to like fucking crucify him for some bullshit, and they posted a photo. I was like, that doesn't even look like Connor. Like the tattoos aren't even matching up. Like that's not him, but. Yeah, they're trying to crucify him for bullshit now. Like, I think that maybe he might have been with some girl, like, but they just obviously were trying to make it look really bad. Mm-hmm. But I think he's smart enough to know not to get caught up with that shit. He was just probably too you would, tired. Yeah, but you would... After a little alcohol, people get stupid. It's true. They they start not caring. Too much proper no, 12. never been drunk. Yeah, he doesn't drink. That's a lie. I mean, I don't drink now, but I was... I had, a lot a party pro- had a lot of problems. <laughs> I'm very happy to be on this earth right now. I had a lot of problems. Man, what happened with your podcast? I know you had your podcast rolling. You guys still doing it? I mean, we just we sold it, made so much money from it. Like we didn't need to do it. We can do that. Bought another. Is jet that going to happen? Yeah, bought a jet ski. So, so you're not going to bring shit. it back? What's uh? What were you doing it? What was? The- we would just talk about random stuff, random fight stuff. Who's we? Uh, um, myself and Jonathan Snowden. Oh, okay. Um, but it was at the time, like, I was in Vegas, and he was in Alabama, so the time change. Um, but I might do another one just for fun, just talk random junk, just because, like, I run into cool people when I'm out and about. But, like, I don't know how people have so much time. That's basically what we do. We, yeah. we, we don't, it's called Jiu-Jitsu Radio, but we, we very rarely yeah. talk we get, about Jiu-Jitsu. We get away with it for, like, we make sure to talk about it for the first 10, 20 minutes, throw some MMA, and then after that we can kind of take off. Like, you know, like, people are like, oh, I listen to these nine podcasts. I'm like, how? Oh yeah, that's tough. Mm-hmm. Like I mean, I but like, I push the limit, but it's I, tough. well. I listen to podcasts while I drive. Yeah. But the thing is, like, I'm so my brain is not good, <laughs> so like <laughs> so I can't retain good. anything. Like if I I have to be like in it, You're and right. like I'll even find myself like I'm gonna I'm gonna listen to this podcast, and then like I look and I'm like it's been ten minutes. I don't remember a thing this person no, said. No, you can't sit there and like listen to it like you would an album kind of thing. Like it's definitely background noise. Yeah, but like my thing is, I I lose it. Like I just my brain can't process it. I'm yeah. just not. I'm done. So like you can't edit photos. I feel and like have Alex Jones right going. now. I'm You're kind done. of retarded. Like but I'm, you don't you don't have like you can't sit there and and listen to it while you're editing photos. No, but I will. But then I'll get so engrossed in editing that you like I'll be like, cool, the photos done. Shit, they've been talking for 15 minutes. I don't know what they're talking about. Yeah, no. So I, I, I think a lot of people lie. With what? Oh, when they say that. Yeah, they like, oh, I listen sure. to it. Where people are like, oh, I read 12 books. No, you had to play on that audio book. It doesn't see, count like you see, read it. Talking about editing, that's the that's the dirty little secret that nobody really talks about. With what? With photographers. Like, oh, it's kind of like photographers, as a non-photographer, photographer, photographers are kind of look like, oh, kind of glamorous, take pictures, whatever. But nobody really understands that how much... Boring, boring work you guys have yeah. to do. Sit there at a computer and manipulate light. And, and the worst is when you fucking sit there and you take your time. You took a good shot and you made the tiniest little tweaks to make it look fucking perfect. You're like, Mwah! and then someone's like, oh, let me post it on Instagram and throw this filter on it. Yep. And then they just fucking jack your shit up. Like, why would you do that? Like, why would you do What's, that? What? What is a time on a on a picture? What's the What's the minimum, or what? What's the your average time to to 
to um, edit like a photo. Shooting like in the gym stuff is like real quick because like I know the light already. I have it pretty much all dialed in. When I'm shooting other things, I mean, there's times where if you're fixing everything, because like you have to fix random hair, blemishes, skin, light. Like I mean, there's times where you'll spend 45 minutes to an hour on a photo, maybe even more. On yeah. one photo, yeah, one yeah. photo, dude. That's, that's why he like, gets the gigs and I don't because I don't do that shit. Dude, <laughs> I was just gonna say like, I got this photo thing, or you just hit a button, filter done. Well, like the thing is, like everything looks cool on a phone. Yeah, you know what I mean. So like, no one will notice really anything. But like, if it's going in a magazine or something like that, or they're blowing it up, it's going like on the side of a truck or the side of a building. Then like you kind of like have to like touch it up, or if it's like the face of the company, or like this is gonna be our banner. And also, like, uh, people get up, you know, you can't, I've seen it where people just send photos and, like, they don't really fix the blemishes or anything yeah. like that. Like, I that's don't. That's the trend nowadays. You're not supposed to fix. Well, like, Everybody's never, imperfect. That, that's the thing. Yeah, I'm never going to, like, change a person or anything like that. But I'm like, you know what? It, I, it's sort of like this rule of, like, if it's not, if it wouldn't be there in a couple weeks, I'll take it off. I, so, like, if you have a mole, yeah. that's your rest of your life. If you have a blemish, like, that's not going to be there. That's, yeah. Do me a favor. If you guys ever shoot me. Give me a big bulge in the pants. We don't lie to people. I, I don't. This I don't, isn't look, CGI. We're I'm, not this making is, this Guardians is me of the Galaxy. We're asking a couple of guys. We're just, we're just <laughs> sitting here. talking to two dudes <laughs> talking about bulges. Well, bulges. <laughs> just come on. Couple, from pals, pal to pals. If you guys take my picture. You see they did that? Nintendo did that with Mario? No. Did you see that? No. So like they the new Mario bulge? games, yeah, they gave him a ball. So there's like a Mario tennis game coming out, and there's a photo you see Mario like reaching back, swinging, and all people get, care about is the facts. Like, holy shit, Luigi's got a giant piece. <laughs> it's literally like That's good. I mean, he's, I'm, Reddit feeds of just Luigi's like, always like kind of in the shadow. So yeah, that's but good they for him. took it too far to the point no. where they mathematically tried to figure out <laughs> how big it is. People have way too much <laughs> fucking time. Look, man, people figure out. Look, the worst is, and it happens to me, like, on some of the photos, like, with the gyms and stuff or, like, what's going on, I have to be really careful on, I have to People's pay attention to who's bulge? in the background. No, well, no. that too. But, like, who's in the background or, like, what you see in the photos. They're like, oh, they can't see that that's there. Or you can't see that something like that's in the background. Cause like people, what? Um, like, like side pieces? Oh, you yeah. son of a... Really? Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. We had, um, I, I think I told you this story. It was a DVD. We filmed a DVD for a guy that I work with, and one of the guys that was in the band had gotten in trouble before because he was cheating on his wife. Oof. So when they were filming, they were out in Europe and doing all the backstage stuff and stuff. DVD gets sent out. So everyone in the band got it like a week before he got sent to Masters just to finally approve it. Holy shit, the fucking fire that came around when we got a phone call back like, you need to fucking delete this right now. Like, what are you talking about? I was like, there's a shot of him getting into a limo with this girl. And it turned out to be the girl that his wife was about to leave him with. And she told him, if I ever see you with that girl again, I'm taking everything. Uh... So this D DVD was literally on the way to the masters to get printed up. So, yeah, no. I've had to sit there and deal with that shit. Photos and videos a bunch of times. Like, and so that's no. called some kind of monster, that DVD? No. I wish. You kidding me? Like, <laughs> bro, if I, I tried so hard to try and work with Metallica. I tried so hard. Like, I remember I would reach out hey, to Hey, Metallica. Yeah. No, I, I went that far. I would go either to, like, try and find, like, the direct emails. You're a stalker. To the managers. Oh, 100%. 100%. Like, I would, you kidding me? That'd be, like, my pinnacle to sit there and have been able to, like, work with Metallica and stuff. I was a huge Metallica fan. So who, who, them and Guns N' Roses and Queen are the reasons why I started, like, I got into music to begin with. Like, why I like, spent 15 plus years, like, in the music industry. So why, why? Well, um, is that, I was just going to say, like, would was Dave Matthews the biggest band that I work with? Yeah. Um, it's a jam band, right? Yeah. It's a, for a lot of rich white folks. Or um, just white folk. There's a, I know plenty of white folk that just like. I Dave I would Matthews. say like I don't know if like internationally say yes like in the United States like yeah but I worked with the Japanese band that was like super huge, that they would sell out bigger stadiums than than Dave Matthews but you never hear of them like in Japan they were Named? massive. Oh, uh, Man with a Mission. Sick. So Man with a Mission, the whole gig was that they were women. 
No. Oh. They, were, they were dudes dressed up. So it was Mo and Mabel. Mo, yeah, right? right? No. Oh. It was dudes dressed up that in jumpsuits. <laughs> no one else got that joke. Nah. It was dudes in jumpsuits with wolf heads. Oh, sick. So, like, their whole thing was, like, think of, like, Kiss, Slipknot, where it's, like, that's who they are. So that's who they are. They, like, their whole thing was they were a scientific experiment gone awry, and they became this human-wolf hybrid. And so they, did you do everything in the United States for them? No, I did. Uh, well, for the most part, yeah, the United States, but Sony ended up taking my stuff and just ran with it, and they used it for, like, their international stuff, too. You get paid for that? Yeah. Oh, all yeah, right. yeah. No, that one I, I got paid for. I got shafted because they stole all my stuff. It was kind of like it was just for the U.S., and then like, oh, we're going to take this and use it everywhere else. So it ended up getting used everywhere else, but it was a fucking blast. Fucking Sony. Big business. Uh-huh. Corporate fat cats. No, it was it was cool. I mean, I got to work with a lot of cool people, but I would say probably uh, Dave Matthews or John Mayer were like the biggest ones. You work so, with John Mayer? Yeah, I have all the posters and stuff right there. Yeah. What what'd you do for John Mayer? I handled all his, his junk. Yeah. Oh, you handled his basically, junk. Basically. No, I handled like the uh, this was like his beginning of social media. So I handled the social media and I Why handled the Why are you interviewing the him? Mails. He fucking hung out. No, I handled all the fan handled mail and stuff. Fan mail? Yeah, yeah. I have a photo of me. I'll I'll try and find it. Like opening up his letters, like legit mail. I was opening up his mail. So he's got, like, "Yo, if the anthrax is coming anywhere, oh, I got you're no." I opened up his uh, wedding invitation for Tom Cruise and Katie Holmes's wedding. Sick. So I was like, "No one's gonna fucking believe this." My take a photo of it. Um, so how did you get the fan mail? They would just ship it to the to the uh, to the record label or to the management company. So I would sit uh, there, like go through everything, or go through his Facebook and stuff, all the social. So they media. would mail it to a PO box. Yeah, and then and I'd his get assistant it. would then mail it to you. No, 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 it would just come straight to oh, to the, gotcha, gotcha, to gotcha, the gotcha. label. So I dealt it with everything. And then you'd be like, "Yo, John, yeah. I, got, I got like four pieces that are cool." Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I would be like, "Hey, listen, these came in like, or some people, most people would just ask for an autograph. So yeah. be like, all right, like we'll just send them an autograph." And then John would be like, "Who, who are you?" No, and like no, so, I'm the guy that opens your mail. And like Sorry. I didn't tell you, like I told you this one before, where like. I used to talk to him on the phone a bunch because he would He's call He's like, you're up. the guy that works with men on a mission? Yeah. Like, no. Yeah. That was way, way before that. No, I was definitely the peon in the office kind of thing. But I had to do, um, I had the full spinal tap moment. I told you that. You were like, trapped in a penis? No. Oh. No, I was trapped. No one else downstairs. got that joke. Maybe no, you I got, got it. that one. No. That was. That I don't The pods. Know. You don't watch Spinal Tap? Where well, they got trapped in the pods. I've never and actually watched Spinal Tap. You never oh. fucking watched Spinal Tap? Now nah, don't you feel like a fucking asshole? That's a fucking classic movie. Everything, you know everything that's in that movie really happened, right? Everything that they make fun of in that movie really happened. So like the Stonehenge thing, mm-hmm. that really happened with Black Sabbath. Oh, I thought you meant two reverse. Spinal Tap. I was like, I don't know how to no, tell no. you this. No, no, well, they did go on tour. That's, uh, they, like, they, they're actually, it's like the monkeys. Like the monkeys. They no, went the monkeys really did. They went on tour. Yeah. Yeah. And then they got mad because they wanted to play their own instruments. They're like, yeah, go fuck no, yourself. No, it doesn't happen. Just you sit guys there and look pretty, boys. And then the one, guy, the one guy's grandma invented Whiteout. He was rich. He didn't have to do shit. Yeah. And he was in the monkeys. Which one? The guy with the beanie. Oh, that was like the... There was Peter Tork, there was Mickey Dillons, there was Davy Jones, and then the other guy. <laughs> <laughs> the other guy. <laughs> That's the, the other the, guy. Then there's the Whiteout guy. He doesn't you know, call me the Whiteout guy. I fucking make bank with that shit. No, yeah, but, but John Mayer's in a penis. John Mayer's in a penis. Actually, he was kind of su- supposedly. Oh, he, he was wasn't nice to you. He was super nice to me. Uh-huh. Super nice guy. I think he was just like socially awkward to a lot of people. Like, but again, I, he's. Did a you ever sign his artist. name for him? No, never, 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 never. I'd like that's something I would never do. We would have pre-signed like photos and stuff, mm. and like those you send out. If there were certain letters that were like that really kind of seemed special, then we would send like it a off. kid that was like I'm yeah, sick. Or there anything. was I remember to this day too. There was like it was the first time I really saw this. It kind of threw me off. Was someone that was like suicidal. This girl was suicidal, and she like wrote this huge letter. She made like all these drawings and stuff, and talked about how she was a cutter, oh. like she would like stab herself and all this stuff, like in the arm and like everything. And then, the, like his music like really helped him out or helped her out. And I was like, all right, that one's going into like the Ford like bin. But yeah, most of the time people like that send letters are full of shit. They're just the collectors that want the autographs. Mm-hmm. So they'll say, oh, I have cancer. Like, you look them up on Facebook. It's like, no, you don't. 
<laughs> this is you. I'm looking at you right now. Like, you don't have cancer. Ah, look at him. He's a doctor. Yeah. No, well, no, because they're. What do you, how do you do? Like, no, because yo, he's like, the greatest doctor in the world. No, he can I, look at somebody and diagnose them. Uh, dude, saw your photo. You're on a jet ski. No yeah. way you have cancer. Like, Doesn't happen. No, but no, a lot of people do that because you. I looked at it that way. Like, no, everybody did. But then you start noticing, like, more and more letters. Everybody sends the same letter, like the same thing. They just change the name because they want to have like two or three different versions. It's like, okay, gotcha. like, really, word for word, the same letter, and it's two different people. It's kind of I mean, awkward. The amount of people in the world that could happen. I mean, there's a lot of people. And they get say cancer. like a monkey can sit at a typewriter and write Shakespeare eventually. Yeah, it's been disproven though. Yeah, I don't. Oh, think they tried been. it. Yeah, no, there was some other somebody did the actual mathematics, oh, like mathematics and they said that's impossible. It Nothing's would, impossible because no one could write that bad on. Oh, oh sorry. I think it's no. Time Shakespeare's to wrap it cool, up, gentlemen. Yeah. So anyway, jujitsu is the uh, it's a gentle art. It's the gentlest art. Yeah. Yeah. I used to Unless do it. You, I used you, to do it until my neck gave out. I used to hold pads for Glenn too. You were I used the to hold pads for everybody. <laughs> he was the boxing coach for a while. I held pads for everyone. Those were the days. Did you hold pads for for Spong? I did. I hold pads for Tyrone Spong. How much I held, did that hurt? Uh, that was bad. I held pads for Rumble. That was bad. I held pads for Kush. I held pads for Rico Verhoeven, which was pretty awful. Yeah. So, so here, here. here. Out of all the people you've shot, fighters, yeah, who's the one you'd, shot you'd, as you'd, know. you'd want to get less punched in the face by? Uh, the one person. Uh, man. I yeah. like, I'm stumping them then. Yeah, these like, are like... Because they're like, <laughs> weird question. Would you rather... Or how about say this way. Would you rather get punched by Gokan Saki, nope. Rumble, nope. Spong, nope. or Verhoeven? No. Like, you didn't have an option. No, they were like... One of them is going to punch you in the face. They could literally kill me. Three of them are going to punch you in the face. (laughs) One of you, you get the pass on. No, they were taking the pass on. No, that's totally opposite. (laughs) No. Who do you not want, like... Or who would you rather get hit by? Because you think, like, I could probably stand a better chance with that one. No, they all hit like trucks. That's crazy, right? And most people don't realize that. Like, you never... You can't tell from TV. I almost actually probably would rather get hit in the face than I get knocked out and I wouldn't remember anything because if I get, like, a leg kick... You could die, though. I would rather take a leg kick. You're not going to die from a leg kick. You're going to sit there and limp right. for a long time. Tyrone Spong, Goken Saki, Overeem. Fuck, Mary kill. Go. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to do all three of those. are going to do that to us. Well... Fuck that. Who's got Can the I most just, money? I'm marrying that one. <laughs> All right. Can I just do three fucks? Yeah. <laughs> Who's got the... <laughs> I gotta get killed by all of them because I'm not doing the other two to either one of them. So what do you got planned next? What's next on the agenda? You got the, the uh, book? I got... Well, we're doing the, the wrestling book. I have uh, Titan fighting this week. Are you already going to shoot it? Mm-hmm. I'll be there. So I'll come Sweet. and bug you. Yeah, yeah. please do. Uh, then I think uh, I might go to New York for WrestleMania, not to go to the show, but to shoot a different show. Josh uh, Barnett's doing a show, so I can make my way up there. Nice. I will do it. Like it's a it's Josh Barnett's blood sport, and it's going to be more like a. I don't think they even have ropes. It's going to be more like a catch wrestling, like oh, real sick. submission wrestling. Um, like like back in the day, like uh, what's it called? Like, um, yes, the one where Gary Albright used to. Oh, and uh. uh you know what I'm yes. talking about. That it's going to be like Is that. Is it UWF? UWF. Yeah. Yes, UWF. Is it going to be it's going to be UWF ish? It's very strong style. Yes. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay. Um so that and then uh PFL starts in May. Oh nice. So I got all those events that I have to shoot. And then uh I think I'm going to shoot Wimp to Warrior. Which is like a thing where they take normal people and yeah. they train them and eventually they get into their own MMA fight. I think I'm gonna shoot that. Isn't that the who's doing that? It's not the Rock. He wishes. Well, he's got the, the his whole gladiator thing. Oh, well, that's like a TV it? show. Yeah, Web to Warrior is a big company. They do it all over the world. I could have sworn I read something the other day, but I'm sorry. Keep going. Um, let me see. Let me pull out the old calendar. Yeah. Pull the old time tree. The, the Ryan Loco tour. Let's see if I have any. I never got one fun. of those stickers, by the way. What? Well, I got shot by I got Ryan shot Loco. By Ryan Loco. And well, yeah. one of those oh, I'm gonna go to Charlotte and I'm gonna shoot the Crockett Cup, NWA ah. Ring of Honor, and then uh, I'm gonna go to Vegas and shoot AEW, yeah. All Elite Wrestling. Yeah, well, that's the new, the new hot spot. It's the new, the new new. Are you gonna go shoot say. the the new XFL? Um, I would shoot that if they'd let me. 
I love it. Cool. Shooting football is fun. It's yeah. a pain in the ass, but it's fun. Yeah. Because like it hurts your legs and everything. And yeah, like, you got to be squatting. You're always stuck. They you get, you're stuck in four corners, like because you can't be in the middle because the team's there, the yeah. coaches and everything. So it's like hard to have that stick that you're camera sticks on yeah because you have the giant lens so you can't be holding it it's like good luck with that That's then true. like i was last last game i shot was in nebraska and it was like freezing cold my hands were falling i had hand warmers like the ones you like yeah. rub and start i had them in my gloves dead on my skin Didn't both hands anything. did nothing yeah. i'm just freezing and like the play would start <sighs> like this just huddle in the, the corner lighter. I would have lit myself on fire. No, no, no. They had the Zippo lighter hand warmers. You haven't seen that? No, I don't think it would have mattered. You get like you literally could have lit me on fire, and I would have been freezing. It was so cold. It was so awful. Like my feet never got warm. Mm -hmm. Like the next day, my feet were still cold. Until I got back to Florida, it really didn't. They were cold in the hotel room. For sure, you got a little bit of frostbite. Oh yeah, pretty sure I lost it. I felt like I feel like I now know what it's like to climb Everest. After shooting a football game in Nebraska. So, like, if you ever meet someone like, I climbed Everest, I'm like, dude, <laughs> so me and you. I. I totally get it. We're, we're like this. Blood because brothers. I shot a football game in Nebraska. I feel like if I met someone that climbed Everest and I said, I shot a football game shit. in Nebraska, he'd be like, <laughs> what whoa. Is wrong? <laughs> what is wrong? You're with hardcore. <laughs> so, you got a pretty packed schedule. Yeah, it's so far so good. I'd like it to be Pretty more good. packed. Ideally, yeah. I'd be working every day. It's only, I only like to do two things, hang out with my wife and dog or, or work. You going to go down uh, to Hard Knocks some more? Um, yeah, you know what's nice is that like the train drops you off right there. Yeah, it's And so now right I start taking the train instead of driving because I, I don't know if I told you this. I freaking hate traffic. I hate traffic. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't say you hated driving. You hated traffic. Yeah, you That's what you that. said earlier. You That's didn't say you hated driving. You said you no, I said traffic. That's what I just traffic. said. Yeah. I didn't you say just driving. Said, you just said driving? No, I said traffic. No, you said, you traffic. said driving. No, I didn't. Play, the, play it back. Steve? <laughs> play it back, Producer Steve, Steve run it back. Sure you just said Steve now. <laughs> Producer Steve, run it back. We're going to run it back. Timestamp this. What is it? We're at 150, All right, I'll double check it. Thank you. All right. I'll hate you know. traffic. I'll, I'll have Steve. I don't mind driving. I'll have I hate Steve traffic. Text you. I drove across the country. I feel like if Did someone. You take Route 66? I feel like if someone. I met someone that climbed Everest and I said, I shot a game in Nebraska and I drove across the country. They'd be impressed. So, so are you like wow. diehard Nebraska fan now? The Huskers. Go Huskers. <laughs> go Big Red. GBR. <laughs> hey. Die hard. The That's best good. part is like when I walk, dope, when I walk through an dope. airport, I have my Nebraska hat on, and like other people see you, and like yeah. we have a bond. And it's like GBR, go big red, go big red, and like that's what we do. And then like I'll see someone with an Iowa hat, and we'll be like, "Boo, what's up? What's up, dude? You really gonna wear that beef? shit around with me? You're here, really? You gonna wear that around here? Or then like my house? people will be like, I'll be sitting on a plane, and like someone next to me, and I haven't actually two weeks ago. I'm sitting on a plane, first class, of course, and uh, <laughs> first class. And uh, the guy next to me was like, oh, West Palm, you're home? I go, yeah, how about you? He's like, no, I'm coming here for a conference. I go, oh, where are you coming from? Omaha. I go, oh, Nebraska's my second home. And he's like, what do you mean? And I mentioned that about the football. And he's like, oh, that's so crazy. And he's like, wow, how One crazy that we're both there in Nebraska people. And we're both sitting in first class. And we're better than everyone. And I was like, I know, it's crazy, right? And uh, well, what's funny, though, is that I had a shirt on that was making fun of the the Jordan shoes that came out that said no photos on them. So my yeah. buddy made a shirt that said no photos. And I didn't realize that I'm sitting in first class as everyone's boarding with a drink and they're walking ginger ale, not a drink, but a drink, but I'm walking and they see a shirt and it says no photos. I look like the biggest douchebag, <laughs> <laughs> like to the point where like the flight attendant was like, no, what does that mean? And then yeah. the person walked by and I was like, I kind of want to take your photo now because it says no photos. You're going to be famous because of that shirt. I was like, thanks. Go back because I'm the first back and you're the, not. Back to the land of the line, yeah. Kim Kardashian. But yeah, that was weird being on a normal plane because I usually fly private. Tell Brock to, to exactly. remedy that. So wait, hold on. Go back. So remember he said that he hates stuff. He doesn't like hate, stuff. I hate everything. Why don't you ask him how many pairs of shoes he owns? Yeah, a lot of shoes. A lot of shoes. A lot what, of shoes. A lot of shoes. Well, I mean, that, I used to collect Jordans. Right, but how do you get here in a box? How many Jordans? How do I get here in a box? box? Oh no! Then I sold everything when I kicked got kicked out of my mom's house. I sold everything. Okay. To pay for like the first down payment rent or whatever for the apartment that I was moving into, so I got rid of everything. Like Is there everything. a pair that you wish you didn't? Uh, I wish I didn't sell the Heineken Dunks, the Nike SB yeah. skateboarding. They were Heinekens, and I I 
bummed that I, I missed out on I sold those and I'm bummed that I sold the cool gray Jordan 11 so that I really really like did you see the the new Reebok in and out for the for the burger I think it's either the Reebok or Puma one of the two I don't know but I was probably made, on a plane they made the in and out like class. themed shoes and they're getting sued by in and out oh for sick it. they're actually pretty fucking dope looking I'd wear those nah I'd fucking rock them and then he's got the the shop shoes oh yeah yeah <laughs> So it was funny because, like, uh, he shop posted a photo with them, and I just wrote, nice shoes. And then my buddy hits me up. He's like, hey, dude, I work at Reebok. He'd give me your address. And he sent me him. And I was like, I probably won't be home. I'll be in first class. But if he's like, <laughs> I'll see if my assistant can pick him up. And I really don't wear Reebok, but thank you anyway. I'll see yeah. if my assistant can pick him up. Yeah, go ahead and send them to me. Maybe so I'm, I'm cool with Reebok. So I think I, what they so do with the, I think some of the things they do with the UFC is wrong, but I'm cool when with Reebok I meet your as a wife, whole. I can call her your assistant? Uh... Not if you want to survive past the next five minutes. Well, he just said. <laughs> or no, is that noodles? It's noodles. The assistant. <laughs> yeah. No, you could. I'll get yelled at for that one too. Yeah. I'm the assistant in the house. I fully admit it. I clean the house. I do the dishes. I cook. My wife is the stud. I have no problem with that. Yeah. She, she's super cool too. She you makes the money, and I just sit there and I get very lucky. Happy life, wife. Happy life. Happy um, husband. Happy. What rhymes with husband? Nothing. All right. That one. And then there's a reason. Right. Because it doesn't matter if you're happy. <laughs> yeah, it, doesn't matter. it doesn't matter. But I am very happy, honey, if you're listening. All right. I love you She's so much. Not. I guarantee you. <laughs> I love you so not much. Listening. I should just have, we'll have her come here next time and say, all right, tell me everything that annoys you about Ryan Loco. Oh, man. She'll tell you that she'll, like, he wears the same ripped shirts every day. You have, like, a shit ton of shirts, though. I like, got rid of a bunch. They don't spark joy. Yeah, yeah. If you don't spark you didn't get joy, rid of all, all the all the the flex shirts, that's for sure. Oh, I got rid of so much stuff. Did you? I'm not a memorabilia guy. Yeah, I don't yeah. care. I don't care about autographs. Yeah. So like a lot of it's like gone. Where people are like, you got rid of that one? Yeah, I don't care. It's just not my thing. I'm. I'm uh, I think you, if you're gonna keep anything, it should be memories. Well, like memories you keep. My thing is like if it's something super special, like oh, it might the shirt might not be important, but so and so gave it to me, or we yeah. got like I enjoy buying things on trips because then it makes me think of the trip. Right. You right. know, so I'm like, if you're going to buy something really nice, let's say you're in Italy and you flew there first class, of course. And uh, <laughs> so you're there like that's when you buy something, you know, from Gucci or Prada. Because then you're like, yo, I'm wearing this belt and it makes me think of Italy when I got it. Or it makes me think of France, right. you know. So that's I like rocks. Swiss. Yeah. So that's like, what I do. I find little rocks. pebbles. And I said that one. I, I took a rock from a, a volcano in Iceland. And that's how I proposed to my wife. You had it, like, made into a... No, no, no. I was just like, anyone can get you a ring. Yeah. I was in a fucking volcano in Iceland. I, I went. Like, we you. went in. Like, Who we, would do that for you? Who would do And I was like, here you go. You? And I proposed to her with the rock. And, and the rock was there, which was even crazier. <laughs> which is really... Wow, Dwayne. We we're flying I call him class. Dwayne. Yeah. Call him I always call him Dwayne. When we're on the jet, I'm like, Dwayne. Oh, that's the thing, right? He I, can't use see, the rock You're obviously not as close as him and I because I call him Dewey. Oh, that's nice. You can't, like, he actually can't use that anymore. What? That's why they just call him, like, Dwayne Johnson now. They don't use The Rock because they have the, the movie with Nicolas Cage? No, the copyright. No, no, he's back to The Rock. No. Yeah. Go look it up. We don't fact check on here. Yeah. Dwayne The Rock Johnson. That's his but name. But he can't go, like, he can't put stuff up as The Rock because of the copyright. Because WWE has the copyright for it. Yeah, but I'm sure they sold it to him. I doubt it. They wouldn't sell that. No way they would sell that. We're going to check this. Look it up. I'll stay on here. I'll stay on the line here while you check this. Let's see. Are you going to shoot Shab next week? Uh, let me just text him. Oh, no, this week. You're you going to shoot Shab? Who? Dwayne? Yeah, go ahead. He has Twix. it? I'll text him real quick. How come he's The Rock on Instagram? That's the Instagram name. He's going to keep that. No problem. So, uh, I, I got an email or a message, Brendan, and see. Might yeah. do like some cool Miami thing because he's down in Miami. Like some like pink shirt, Miami Vice vibe. I was sure he'd love that for sure. Yeah. He's always uh, he's always game for anything. Yeah, it's a cool dude. You got to get him with with Callen. Yeah, I've never. Stuff. I shot Callen at the the when improv. Yeah, by himself, but he wasn't with uh, Brendan. Yeah, no, I wish he would have been for that show. That show was fucking hilarious when we went to go see. Oh, it was yeah, actually I, I went with Luke. Oh yeah. Yeah, we went there. It was pretty funny. No, Brian. Cousin Luke. No. Uh, oh, cousin Luke. No. No. Wait Uncle Luke there. from Two Live Crew. Wait a, yeah, no, I'd go with Uncle Luke. But thanks for peeking the mic. Did we figure out about here. The Rock? Do Did I need to call him? No, he didn't look it up because he knows it was right now. No, I don't know what I'm looking All for. All right, well, fuck it. Don't worry. We'll look it up later on. All right, Mr. Loco. Yes. I'll let you go. Where Have they, we started? Where would you... Uh, oh, yeah. I forget to hit record. Shit. Oh. 
Where can the the people follow you? Where do you want them to follow you? Uh, I mean, it's hard to follow me. I'm in first, first class. class. First, <laughs> class. <laughs> first class. Well, they got internet. Just you got wave. Internet in first class, don't you? Wave as you walk by, I guess. Yeah. I mean, don't look directly back. at me. <laughs> don't. No eye contact. Uh, look down. At Ryan Loco for everything. Instagram, Twitter, website, uh, MySpace, uh, Tumblr, Zanga, Live Journal. Zanga. Wow. The uh, website. Uh, Weibo. Um, no, well, not everybody's in China and Japan. <laughs> you never know. He's the only person that was allowed to keep his G plus. Yeah, we got Google again. Plus. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Google Buzz. Really big he on Google Buzz. He still has the only functioning Vine account. Big on Vine. Uh, big that? on Yahoo Mail. Um, you can you go to Ask Jeeves. Type my name Ryan in. Ryan Loco at AOL dot com. Uh, yeah, my AOL Instant Messenger is still kicking, which I love. Uh, so at Ryan Local for everything, RyanLocal.com for the photos. Uh, Don't buy it because you're not going to be able to buy the photos anyway. Yeah, you can't get them. Yeah, but you might be able to donate for one. If you randomly message me at the right time, you gotcha. might be able to get one. It's usually after a good cup of coffee. But at the airport, just leave me alone. <laughs> Don't know photos saying. at the airport. I mean, I'm, so in, one, I'm in the lounge. <laughs> I mean, you guys aren't going to be there. <laughs> So I'm fine. <laughs> What's the book coming out? The new book coming out. Uh, know? the new book. The uh, new book is hopefully in a couple months. I'm still putting all of it together. It wants to be way bigger. I want you to feel like you got like. It's got to pass the weight test. Yeah, it's got to pass the weight test. Got to get your bang for your buck. And just a lot of cool older photos. I might do a couple articles in there, a couple essays. Sports. Um, yeah, but when photo. you're in first class, you have so much time, you know, and so much yeah, room yeah. that you just you could write. You can. And like they give you a out. desk. Like uh, a it's desk? Really, yeah, it's really, really cool. Desk? They give you custom essays. Pens. You gonna put in it, bro? Couple of essays, man. Blood in, blood out, eh? <laughs> Orale. Right. Well, everybody, make sure you follow Ryan Loco on Instagram. Feel free to make fun of him. Please do. Everyone uh, else does. Yeah. Follow Sean at Gorilla Boy BJJ, and you can find me at Sounder Marketing. Make sure you follow uh, the Jiu Jitsu Radio Instagram channel. Subscribe. Uh, we're on YouTube. You can find us all over the place. Shout out to our sponsors, Choke Aloha, Jiu Jitsu Soap, Giraffe Choke, and Nomad Surf Shop. You got some sponsors, right? You oh. got your Reebok, Roots of oh. Fight. You got all your sponsors I have out no there. Sponsors. Oh, man. First I mean, I guess like I can uh, thank Reebok. I can thank Roots of Fight. I can thank Beats by Dre. Uh, that's it. Nike? No Nike? No Nike. Oh, not, man. He's not off the Nike I figured the amount of money I've spent with Nike, they'd help me out. Yeah, no. right? You'd figure. All right, Brian. Thank you, Delta. Thanks, Delta. Yeah, I love Delta. It. Thanks, Brightline. Medallion status. All right, Appreciate Ryan. it. Thanks for doing this. Appreciate no problem. It. I got a flight to catch. So. All right, I love you guys. See you guys next time. Peace.